and then there were 30. The first cut has happened in team competition here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. The Alliant Energy Center's North Park is the site of team tests six and seven. Moving day with just two days of competition remaining until we crown the Affiliate Cup fittest team on earth. Alongside Jamie Hagia and Jeremy Austin, Lauren Smith, our eyes and ears down on the field. My name is Joel Godet. Teams 21 through 30 in this opening heat, but teams one through 10 start with the third place team from a year ago. CrossFit Invictus trying to vault up to a gold medal, 455 out of a possible 500 points. Over always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Oslo Navy Blue, second place each of the last two years. And right now sitting 12 points out of that first place position. Jeremy, this test is similar to something we saw with the individual athletes, at least in structure, at semifinals. Absolutely, Joel. And test four and five at semifinals mimics this. A bit of it of a glitch in the matrix with the weight staying the same for entire four athletes. 400 meter shuttle runs. That weight, 185 and 135. First one for max reps, and then it is 10 reps, and we're gonna hoof it downfield and go as fast as we can. Jamie, as we take a look at the recipe for success pre uh, presented by Trifecta, how do you choose which athletes go where? For both tests, these athletes are going to have to either run or snatch. So it's really about setting your teammates up for success. Which one can they do best under fatigue? And then the second one, grip and rip, whether you're going touch and go or unbroken, you just got to pick it up and go. There were three teams on the outside looking in at the cut line yesterday. All three of those teams made the jump. That includes Rhino in lane three, Coda in lane four, and Oslo Nice in lane six. Let's go down and introduce you to the fourth member of our crew, Lauren Smith. Cheers, Joel. So pairing strategy on this workout's dividing opinion. I've been in the warm-up area getting a gauge on it. CrossFit Coda are pairing their heavy hitters with a weaker partner aiming for average placement. CrossFit Oslo Nice, however, are pairing their strongest together. Coach Simon Aislinn has checked on the points weighting and believes one strong result will outweigh average placement in terms of points. Lauren, thank you. First two athletes set to go. And off on the shuttle run. This has become a staple of CrossFit competition over the last couple of years. Joe, one thing to keep in mind, the athletes have got to go around counterclockwise the entire time. And you're running around in circles compared to what the athletes did at semi-finals when they were on an air runner. And if you compare this to straight line running around a track, these athletes' time is probably not going to be comparable because there's going to be too many turns involved. So this is probably something, Jamie, that you'd have to keep in mind when you are pacing this. Power your performance with Momentus. You can enter to win the ultimate prize pack at livemomentus.com slash CrossFit. I agree. I think you see these athletes taking to the field, and it is so different than running on an air runner or running on flat ground a full lap around the track. These athletes are going to have to make turns, and anyone who comes from a sports background, we need we know these shuttle runs all too well. Basketball, particularly. <laughs> <laughs> Football, track, any of these. If you have any background in that, you know that this is a... I think what's tough about this is that you can't really gauge it. You don't know. On a track, you know where the 200, the 300, and where you can push that final 100. This is kind of like getting a feel for it, but you have to go hard. But your distance as well, it's starting shorter and getting longer, so it's actually getting more difficult, and the pace has really slowed down now. But 90 seconds, that's not a bad pace for a 400-meter shuttle run. They were going to do these shuttle runs free throw line to free throw line, but it brought back <laughs> bad memories for Jamie. <laughs> Please, no. No more of those. Future former Big Ten point guard, Jamie Higgian. Pac-10. Pac-12. Yeah, Pac-10. Well, not, not, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now, speaking to these athletes, they did say you have to run at a hard effort, but look at these athletes. You have to pick up a heavy barbell. So they were running at probably an 80 to 90% effort so that they can cycle, get through some of these reps of the snatch. We saw Erica Folo for PSC, the first one to start on the barbell. This is Laz Stallwood now, who's trying to work through this 135 pound snatch from the Invictus Sea of Green. And we saw what she did to the machines inside the Coliseum yesterday. Absolute endurance athlete, can she control the barbell? Looking good for Coda. 
and right away you see some of these women missing their snatches, right? Coming off of a hard run, your body, it's the first test of the day after the, and the third day at that. Well, Jamie, you mentioned it with placing of athlete and your fatigue levels have got to come into uh, consideration when you're doing this. The number of reps these athletes are doing is probably not as many as we, we thought they would. And that's Hannah Hardy on the left side of screen. Remember, she was the member of Training Think Tank that needed medical assistance at the end of the 5K as we come in the final couple of seconds here for the women to lift. Good to see Hannah Hardy out there and leading off this test as Nicholas Anapolsky takes off for PSC. One of the beautiful things about the CrossFit Games is that, you know, for semifinals, some of these athletes can run through these tests, try to figure out a strategy and a plan. But for this, when you're do taking to the field for the first time, you have no idea. You, you have to just trust your fitness, trust your training, and go with what feels best in the moment. Dakota CrossFit Redemption leads the way with 13 reps through that first round. Rhino CrossFit is just one rep off pace, nobody else in double figures. Talk about shock to the system on day three of competition. You've got a little bit of fatigue on board. How well have you recovered, hydrated, getting your nutrition right? Coming out first thing Saturday morning. And that nervous system's taken a hit from last night. Test number five in the Coliseum, and again, short, sharp intervals. There's Sean Early for Invictus Sea of Green. Competed in his first ever CrossFit Open this year. Qualifying for the CrossFit Games in his very first attempt. It's not fair. Both not necessarily replicable, but also something that gives you something to shoot for. And I was able to speak to some of the Invictus coaches, and he said seven out of the 12 athletes on all the Invictus teams are new at the games. This is their first time out there. There's no experience on this Invictus Sea of Green team. They're one of six teams here at the games, all making their debut between all four athletes. And 185 pounds is no issue right now for Sean Early. And Sea of Green has some work to do because there were only six reps on the board for Laz Stolwood after that first round. Jamie, you talk about barbell cycling and the time you've got before that time cap. What's that time frame going to be before you really start to slow down and fatigue? You know, for these athletes, I would suggest, I mean, you see them right away, Ethan Helbig, he's gonna go touch and go reps into, when you hit that fatigue, then you go fast singles right away. Rhino CrossFit now in the lead with 22 reps after Helbig lets that barbell drop. Coda has fallen three reps off pace with Casey McAllister, the brand new dad. And police officer, formerly and to be, he's moving away from Coda to go back into his SWAT team career after the games. 10 seconds left in the window. Rhino had a really good performance inside the Coliseum yesterday, and they've carried it over out here to North Park to begin day three. Good start to competition, and some different pairings, as we found out earlier in the warm-up area. How are people gonna structure this to get the most out of the 200 points that are on offer this morning with these two tests? And right, it, what we're seeing is that the first one is an AMRAP, as many reps as possible between the male and female, and this second one is gonna be four times. So it is a little bit of strategy comes into play here. Where do you put your best runner? Where do you put your best lifter? Test six out of the way. Test seven now coming, and a completely different test. An athlete's going into the 10 reps of the snatch, and they are going to have to move to get up and down the field because this one is based upon time and the female running first, tagging the male, and come back in and try and get under that six minute time cap. Two completely separate tests here. It's a lot of points on the board to open up your morning, and it all happens very quickly. This is Tori and Mayhem. Huge hopes for this squad of Australians and one Kiwi, Marnie Sykes, here lifting. 
trying to become the first Oceana team to make it onto the podium, put themselves very much behind the eight ball on day one. Massive drought for the Oceania region, trying to get to that podium. We thought had very high hopes for this team coming in. A little bit of an injury to Brendan Swan has thwarted those hopes. Well, there's Kelsey Schulte off and running all by her lonesome. That's the future of Invictus right there. The youngest member of Sea of Green, just 19 years of age. And you notice right away, she drops that barbell, takes off for her run. She's keeping a real upright posture, her chest nice and upright, and she has to dig in, and she's got to move because she knows these women are hot on her heels. Minute and eight seconds in. Schulte back in 2019 as a teenager almost qualified for the CrossFit Games at the elite level. Remember the Open qualified you through that year. She was 31st of the top 30 making it to Madison. She was able to complete those 10 snatches in 36 seconds. So this is where strategy comes into play and we have talked to teams in the back and they said they think this is the harder, more grunt work, grinding, hurting one out of the two. Look how far ahead Schulte is. Now she's got some competition coming from the top of screen. That's plus 6-4 in lane two. Final round, just over two minutes. And Jamie, this is about where you expected these splits to be, although it's only going to get faster as we move through heats. Yeah, the nice thing about this is that, you know, the first in test six, we saw we had a three minute cap, but you're going to see Kelsey cross this line before that three minute mark. So she's going to set her teammate up for success because this one is for time. Pieta Hansen here for plus six for Army Endgame. And she'll release Clint Cole to go to work on the barbell. Clint's going to roll through these 10 very, very quickly. And the Frenchman not too shabby on the run either. So expect way under that six minute time cap, possibly about five. Malo Torres, the male athlete for Sea of Green, partnered with Schulte. I will, Cole. I will tell you, when, when your teammate sets you up for success and gets you an early lead, you have to take advantage, keep your foot on the gas pedal, and keep on going. Well, Jimmy, you have that experience, right? That's what makes team competition unique because you don't want to let them down after they built you an event. It, it is a really interesting factor. You know, you go individual, it's all on you. For this, you your teammates are depending on you, and you want to give it your best effort to set them all up for success. We went sub 30 seconds on the barbell for your leading men right now, and Clint Cole is huffing it. He and Lalo Torres are leading the way. Clint starting to really stride out a little bit and get into his pattern, which is hard to do when you've got the short shuttle runs to start things off as the two final elements of this shuttle run. And started getting into your running pattern a little bit more, though the legs are going to be a little bit heavy. Well, and what was a very quick sprint on these first couple of shuttle runs has turned into a little bit more of a longer stride struggle. And Clint really starting to use those arms at the top of screen as well, trying to propel himself forward because the tank is emptying. This is going to be a super fast time. Clint Cole inside 430 here in test number seven. He's dusting Lalo Torres. Yeah, plus 6-4. Needed the results. They're going to get it. Ouch. And the interesting thing about that, he wasn't the first one off his 10 snatches to that run, but he was able to make up a lot of ground in that 400 meter run. 153 unofficial. For that second half by Clint Cole. Oh, Sean Clark leaving it out there. It's like the mind is willing, the body's just not complying. 
but max effort we saw it last night in the coliseum max effort right here on north park and you mentioned before jeremy that this is getting longer the the distance is longer as this uh the run goes on drag me nelson looks like he's running out of <laughs> the stadium like yeah it's kind of forest-esque for a second there well still this from you gotta chase. put up the stop sign <laughs> Run like you stole it. That's what uh, Chase is one of his recipe for success yeah, for yesterday's individuals. All of these athletes gutting it out as they race to the finish. Raf Durand done for the Rhino Dogs. Rhino won the first half, test six with 27 max snatches. And that's where you see the dichotomy of this programming, Jeremy, and why it's interesting to see these two tests back to back. And 200 points up for grabs for the morning, and we won't know what this, the shakeup's going to be. Sea of Green coming out to an early lead for the second portion, test number seven. And trying to give your team members the best start possible. 6-4 Army, though, Clint Cole, that Final rep was a little bit dicey, but that's all he needed. And the big Frenchman currently living in New Zealand, really getting after it. And I tell you what, the lactate threshold of those legs is at its peak. The rest of the team happy to walk off. I don't think Clint's going to be walking off in such high spirits just yet. So plus 6-4 Army Endgame comes away with a heat win. At least in test number seven. Two hundred points up for grabs here at the North Park this morning. Team tests six and seven, back to back. We're gonna run and then we're gonna snatch a lot, and then we're gonna snatch a set number and run as fast as we can, with a chance to really shake up the leaderboard. Jamie Hagia, Jeremy Austin, Lauren Smith. My name is Joel Godek. Glad to have you along with us. This is moving day for the teams, trying to set the kind of tenor for the rest of the competition and trying to hunt down CrossFit Invictus, last year's third place team. No shortcuts, has kind of flown under the radar, just 15 points off the podium. The Danish team, captained by Andre Hude right now in fourth overall, and Mayhem Independence is in fifth. They won test one to kick off this game's week. The description for tests six and seven, Jeremy, we're testing two different things through two of the same movements. A lot of speed though as well, you mentioned it, Joel. We're gonna do some 400 meter shuttle run, snatching 185 for the men, 135 for the ladies. Team members one and two will run and do some barbell cycling for max reps. In the second pairing, we'll be doing their Forrest Gump impressions. We saw some in heat number one, and they'll be getting back as fast as they can after getting through 10 reps. Jamie, our recipe for success looks like what? These athletes are going to have to choose wisely. So for both tests, you're going to have to run and snatch. So it's about setting your teammates up for success and who can do each one best under fatigue. The second one, grip and rip that barbell for the snatch. Whether you're going touch and go or fast singles, you've got to pick it up and go. Invictus Unconquerable and CrossFit CLT in lanes 1 and 10. Both ran into some injury issues yesterday. Our final test inside the Coliseum. They are both back out here and will begin this test. Test six and seven in lanes one and lane 10. But CrossFit Trondheim out there in lane six won the 5K yesterday. I went, spoke to them in the warm up area earlier on today. They're really happy with their strategy in the run and getting that test win. However, they're gonna be working on a different strategy to what we have seen so far in heat number one. And they're pretty much gonna flip it. So we're gonna see how that works out for them. CrossFit Milford, Jay Adams, Nikki Torrigiani, Sierra Cameron. Here we go, off and running. 400 meters of shuttle sprinting. It is five pylons that you have to circle. Kind of clockwise, Joel. So you're running around in circles. They're just 
getting longer circles as they go down the field. I believe ellipses. <laughs> yes, ellipses. I like it. I was able to speak to Jason Lydon. He is the owner and coach of CrossFit Milford of 16 years now. But he said that they did this pairing with Nikki and Jay going first in test six because they have they can maintain a high power output on this barbell after running and they are exceptionally fast. And then their second pairing is because they are exceptionally strong. So look for Nikki to rip and rip this barbell. And they know each other exceptionally well. Vicini and Cameron are a couple. There we go for better or worse in team competition. <laughs> what is that? You don't usually like to be coached by your significant well, other, that's, but that's maybe... part of the vows, though, right? Okay. Uh, unwritten rule. <laughs> Looking at CrossFit Kilo 2. We had saw in the er previous heat that some of the women after this run were failing some snatches. So these women, not sure if they're toning it down a little bit, if they're able to see any of that, but what they're gonna do is they wanna come back to this barbell and they need to get as many as they can in whatever time is left over. Jamie, in the Olympic total yesterday, we saw women snatching anywhere from 165 to 185, 195, 200 on the absolute high end. This is 135 for max reps. So what does that feel like, especially under the table? So even if this isn't close to their one max, even if they can snatch 20, 30, 40 more pounds on this, they need to be able to move a high percentage very quickly under fatigue. And so that's what we're looking at. Their legs are tired. So what they're gonna have to do is try their best to make sure technique comes into play here. And we already saw a fail on the first rep by Deirdre Franzen from Kilo 2, and she is their strong lifter. CrossFit Krypton here in lane seven. Keep an eye on them when Ben Smith comes out onto the field. Of course, he injured his knee yesterday. So with and about kilo two, with about. 30 seconds left. These women need to make sure that these are fast singles. They're going to make sure that they're set up nice and tight. The big drive with their legs away from the ground. Get them up overhead. Pick it back up. Twenty seconds left to get as much work done as possible. And you'll notice the hat at the top of the screen. Your leader on the far left with the total number of repetitions completed in the white box. The minus number for the teams to the right, the repetitions that they are behind. Trondheim has now moved past Krypton and Oslo Blackout for second. And the male athlete is released here for test number six. Milford leads the way with 11 total snatches. Excuse me, 12 total snatches. And Jamie, you mentioned it earlier, just in regards to getting to the platform and setting. And Joel, you mentioned it with the loading yesterday, a lot heavier than it is today. CrossFit Essentials, let's go through some mechanics first, consistency of movement, and then add the intensity piece, which we're adding today. What does that mean? Well, mechanics, we're gonna learn the movement first, consistency, practice that movement over and over, and then intensity, add some speed or some load to it. We've dropped the load today, but we have added a whole lot of speed. This is completely different from our test that we saw yesterday. Yesterday, you have 20 seconds. You need to, your technique has to be spot on. It is, you need to perform well for one lift. Here, this is over and over and over again. We're going to repeat this. Look at the shoulder for Kevin Steinhaus. Remember, he was the one that was injured for CrossFit CLT yesterday inside the Coliseum. And he is out there gritting it. Now this will become an issue if he has to try to snatch. I'm by no means the best runner, but I know you need to use your arms when you run. <laughs> so for him to be able to have such a great lead on this run using one arm is very impressive. We'll see what happens when he gets to these snatches. CrossFit CLT was founded during the pandemic in Charlotte. They started running free workouts in parking lots and just had hundreds of people start turning out. And yep, that's probably the smart move here for Steinhaus. He did the run. He's not going to attempt the snatches, it looks like. So CLT will put up an eight for its total in test number six. And Ben Smith, he was injured yesterday. Partial tear of his right knee. And you can see he does have a knee sleeve on. Came back out, ran the 5K, competed in the Coliseum, still going strong. The 2015 fittest man on earth is in it for his team. 
like you saw in his first snatch, right? We usually usually like, like to get a little bit lower in that starting position, but he was in a more upright position, almost more like a deadlift, maybe to gingerly be careful on that deep. Rhino Dogs 27, reps to beat 23 is in second place. That's a tie between Torian and Coda. When you think about the fatigue level of their legs as well, they've done a lot of overhead squats, they've done a lot of cycling, they've done a lot of running yesterday. So there's gonna be some fatigue, so getting lower into that squat, your legs are probably gonna go, hang on a minute, we're already fatigued, let's not go down as far. So if you can pull that bar a little bit higher and not have to squat as deep, your cycle rate's obviously gonna be quicker, but your fatigue's gonna be less. Final 10 seconds. Say maybe you got two more reps in you here. Let's see if Jay Adams, yeah, he's gonna quickly get up on that bar. And Milford adds one more to its total. Omnia, though, winds up with 25 reps. Came from behind to catch Milford there. And the team from Colorado able to surpass that legacy team, CrossFit Milford. Well, Omni has been around quite a bit as well here in the history of the games. Let's go to six. test seven. Out of the way now, there's seven. We have 10 reps to get through. The same loading on the barbell 185 and 135. And this is where the run time really matters. Not so much in the first one, because you need to get max reps, but this one, it's on the clock. You've got to tag your partner in as quick as you can. And a six minute time cap for this. But as was in heat number one, we didn't even need it. 10 seconds until the one minute transition time. And Sierra Cameron is off to the barbell here for 135 pound snatches. Kilos, Jeremy, that is? 61.2, roughly. Roughly. We have a great time during the open trying to convert and use our <laughs> fractional plates, let me tell you. It's fun. Time to beats 424-47. You can see top left corner of your screen. You see these women going touch and go on these snatches. And it, we talked about strategy. Mary Kay Drysilker took off for Omnia, leading the way. Remember, they just picked up the heat win in test six, but then she overran the first pylon. A little bit too excited. Omni and Milford lanes nine and eight. This is going to be a great battle up the field, especially as the length of the shuttle run gets longer and longer. Athletes going around in a counterclockwise fashion as they move down North Park until they hit the fifth and final. Tight turns and also knowing your pacing, knowing when you can push, saving some room in the tank for that final leg of this 400 meter run. We did say that we expected these split times to get faster. Kelsey Schulte for Invictus Sea of Green. 36 seconds to get through the snatches in our last heat. Mary Kay Drysilker just went in 28 seconds for Omnia. Jamie, let's relate running on a track or running in North Park right now to running on an air runner or around a track in a circle doing one continuous motion. What do you find easier? Do you find it easier or harder to run on a assault runner or on the track or on a field doing shuttle runs? You'd probably enjoy shuttle runs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, not I, enjoy them. Not enjoy them. Um, the air runner is difficult because you have to power that yourself. But I think out here the difficult thing about these shuttle runs is that, you know, it's the, the course is going to get longer as it goes, so these runs. So on a 400-meter track, you get to see the curve. You get to see what's going on. Dry Silker has been overtaken by Sierra Cameron, although Mary Kay is trying to leg her out at the finish. And I think Milford had the pass off just a split second faster. It's now Facini and Schmidt. Facini left, Schmidt right for Milford and Omnia respectively. We talked about that team aspect. If your women can help your men, give them a second or two. It looks like they came off the barbell, or the, uh, they're starting their barbells at the same exact time but giving your teammates a lead is going to help out in this test as well. Oh, and Jacob Schmidt had to break. Tony Ficini's cycle rate incredibly fast, and he is off and running here for Milford Team Conquer. And for Ficini with a football and track background, we expect to do him to do pretty well in these shuttle runs. He's going, damn it, not these things again. <laughs> 
Schmidt is now off in the lane next to Ficini. Although we've got two other teams that have also beaten Omnia to this second grouping of shuttle runs. You've just injected your nervous system with 10 quick reps at a relatively heavy weight. Now you've got to settle yourself down and get into a really sort of easy rhythm on those runs. How difficult is that to do on the go and you've got a split second to do that? Your heart rate is through the roof from those snatches. So what you have to do is kind of settle in, but this is not a pace where we can back off because this test is for time. So it's kind of just taking the first couple steps to get used to get going and then it's kicking into that next gear. Alex Smith just did his first shuttle run for CrossFit Krypton wearing his lifting belt. He was able to take it off halfway in between. He was, he was being efficient, but listen, get going. Ficini now getting that lean forward of his body as he's trying to propel himself down the field. And he's coming around to his last mark at a turn. Jacob Schmidt. Omnia is dangerously close to the cut line, so this becomes a really critical start to their day. Ficini's gonna leg this out, so Milford will pick up a big time heat win here in test number seven. And just missed the time to beat. Here comes Schmidt, he's racing with CLT. Schmidt needing all the points he can get, and Jacob Schmidt will put Omnia in. Oh no, they got beat by Unconquerable. Oh, tenths of seconds, critical points. Well, probably something else to think about as well. Where is the chip timer on what leg and which leg you're going to put forward? And are you thinking about that in the last 10 meters or so and trying to get over the line? Probably not. I was sad. <laughs> which get leg across I have it. yet? I want to get there and be done. Fling your body across that line any way you can. Last pylon to run here for Genas. And Alex Smith through for Krypton. We still have one team out there Ooh. lifting. Jeremy, you were able to speak to Trondheim before this test. What did they exactly say about the snatches for this test for them, specifically as a team? Oh, they just were going to flip it around. So you've seen how they were trying to get the maximum points from the first test six, and then not worry too much about test seven. And this is obviously why. And a super heavy barbell. And tough going for Trondheim, especially after that test win yesterday on the 5K run. And I think this is a great example of, this isn't a super lightweight for these athletes. This isn't 135, or 95, you know, for these athletes. So for some of these athletes, this will be a difficult task for them for these snatches. 424-54, just off the time to be for Milford Team Conquer. It was all about cycle rate and how many reps can you do and get your athletes onto the run as fast as possible. Transitions were important as well with Omnia. And Omnia just taking a little bit more time than Milford on the set. But Ficini, his cycle rate on that barbell was excellent. Jamie, you mentioned it. He's done thousands of these. So he's used to how to pace it. He knows when to push, when to back off. And that's where he's pushing at the end. And getting a great time from Milford. Looking reasonably comfortable on that last sprint. <laughs> 200 points in what is the blink of an eye over the course of an entire CrossFit competition. Test six and seven. Having cut down to just 30 teams, this is our now third and final heat for test six and seven. North Park here at the Alliant Energy Center. Snatch and run, run and snatch. Alongside Jeremy Austin, our resident teams games athlete, Jamie Hagia, Lauren Smith, our eyes and ears reporter down on the floor. My name is Joel Cadet. The rest of our crew, so glad you chose to start your weekend with us here in Madison, Wisconsin where this is the most normal race happening at the CrossFit Games this year. If you printed out the sheet and looked at this, you'd say, yeah, it's about, it's about right. 
Individual competition is a Boggle Cup. Yahtzee Cup, same thing. CrossFit Invictus, 455 out of a possible 500 points. They're going to defend that lead, Jeremy, in what tests? Test six and seven for the teams to start off Saturday. First pair will be doing 400 meter shoulder runs and max reps at the 185 and 135 team members. Three and four will do 10 snatches at the same weight and then finish with the shuttle run, which will be based for time rather than reps. Jamie, how do you split this up? For these tests, athletes are going to have to run and snatch any way you have it. So what they're going to have to do is choose wisely. Who can do the best one under fatigue? That's who you're going to set up for each test. And then grip and rip it. There's no time to rest. you got to no, not think, just go. Overall leader Invictus in lane five, Navy Blue lane six, East Nashville's proven squad in lane four. Your top three teams coming into the day. You go out to the outskirts, you've got CrossFit Walleye, one of the two Swedish super teams in lane one. They come in in ninth place, Jeremy, overall. Well, I had a chat to Mia and Phil Hesketh this morning and how they were going to structure this out. And Phil was saying he was hoping for about 17 or 18 reps on the first segment, which were going to be fast singles rather than touch and go. And he said it's going to depend on the bounce of the platform. He's I Nashville proven. Boy, do they have expectation. I spoke with Tim Paulson right before this. And one word, they have Tola. <laughs> Tola, <laughs> Moroccan, <laughs> Moroccan yo. So he is going to be able to touch and go and power through these snatches pretty quickly. Me lift fast. Down to Lauren Smith. <laughs> Also, theoretically, a really strong event for CrossFit Osley, Oslo, Navy, Blue. After underperforming on that run, Lena Richter's shoe came off. So they really didn't manage to live up to expectation, but they exceeded it in the lifting. Coach Jochen Rye was laughing because both the girls didn't understand that kilogram to pound conversion. So they accidentally opened three pounds off their all-time PB. So running a snatch workout right now will play to their strengths. We got shoes falling off everywhere at these CrossFit games. Alex Kazan. Tremendous job out here with no shoes yesterday. G-Shock is the official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games and is giving you a chance to win a new G-Shock watch, a CrossFit Level 1 seminar, and over $400 in CrossFit swag. You can visit gshock.com slash CrossFit for more. They kick things off for the first lot of shuttle runs, the white and red. First athlete for Invictus out in front. If you're just tuning in, the white and the red signifies the leader of the competition. And Invictus have held that, seems like, for the entire competition so far. Since test two, they lost test one, Mayhem Independence. And then after that point forward, Invictus has been in the driver's seat, Brittany Weiss. She'll work with Jorge Fernandez in this first grouping. This is a 400 meter shuttle run, which is broken down into five pylon segments. The thing about the 5K run they did yesterday, this is a completely different test of how you're going to be going through your monostructural, so your gymnastics, your Olympic lifting, obviously, or your weighted movements, and then your monostructural. So monostructural with the cycle two days ago, the 5K run yesterday, now we've got a short sprint. Your body's probably going, what are you doing? You're doing long or you're doing short? Absolutely, your body is getting used to that. And what's hard about this is it's not on a track where you can see, I have 100 meters left, 200 meters left. You see that, that Lena Richter was able to overtake Brittany Weiss on that run because that distance, it gets longer as you go on that 400 meter run. And Mia Hesketh is doing warm up snatches on the left side of your screen for CrossFit Walleye. She holds the record for the biggest snatch in a live CrossFit competition. Nearly 230 pounds because of kilogram conversions back at the 2018 Dubai Championship. And that bounce of the platform from the barbell, that is almost getting over her knees every time. So probably that 17-18 that Phil Hesketh mentioned is probably not achievable with the amount of bounce and the resetting of the barbell. So if the barbell doesn't bounce and it just hits the ground, it's a lot easier to pick up straight away. And you mentioned it, grip and rip. And interesting to see, we talked about different techniques, touch and go, or fast singles. When you have your fastest or your best, strongest athlete see, doing singles, I'd probably go with that technique. And this is a great pairing here for East Nashville Proven. If you're going for max snatches, Taylor Williamson just going to rip this barbell, and then Tola Maracano almost ominously looming there, waiting to be unleashed. Give, me, give me a number. What are we thinking for Tola? 20-something. 22. It's like waiting for a Tim Paulson echo bike. Yes. All right, then. Here we <laughs> go. 
Tola Maracchio has become a better runner, but I imagine this will just be keeping his heart rate down, getting through this piece, and then getting himself to the barbell. And when we're looking at running, if you if running isn't in your forte, you know what? A 400 meter run, all of these athletes can do that. It's a three minute test, so he's able to push hard for this, get to those where he's comfortable and where he's going to really excel in those snatches. Power your performance with Momentus. You can enter to win the ultimate prize pack at livemomentus.com slash CrossFit. 14 reps from OBA led the way. Tola taking a lot of time with this run, and you mentioned it, Jamie, just trying to get that heart rate down, because he knows he can grab this barbell and do more reps than anyone in the entire field, individuals probably included. So he's really going to take his time with this. And this is where experience come into play. You take a look at this field, and he is in the back. He is last in this run, but he's not worried at all, because he knows when he gets to that barbell, that's where he's going to shine. Well, and the difference in the run, seconds. Tola knows. Okay, I'm gonna rip the barbell faster than anybody else. If if we were talking about minutes, different story. 100 percent He knows that if you lose a couple seconds here, no big deal. He can get way more reps in those seconds that he's gonna make up for on that barbell. It's 14 reps for Kelsey Keel from OBA, the Philadelphia-based team. Taylor Williamson also had 14 for East Nashville. So Proven is tied for the top score in this heat. And that would be the top score overall including the first two heats. We are lifting with Alex Alebro. And here is Maracanio. Oh, this is so <laughs> Hello. <laughs> touch and go. Four reps for Maracanio. I want to know how many he's going to do touch and go for his first set. It's probably going to be like 15 or 16. Oh, well, he's just going to be set to five. Yeah. He tried to go touch and go, and I believe it was 275 back at the West Coast Classic for two back in 2021. But smart decision by him. He has about 35 seconds left of these snatches. Sets of five or seven will be great for Tola. Maracanio has 11 in the bag. You mentioned 275, Joel, 125 kilos. It's nothing really to sneeze at. But someone of Tola's ability, he's a powerful athlete. East Nashville Proven has won the test. 27 was the time or number to beat. And that's now 16 reps for Tola, 17. We set the over under at 20, there's 18. He's not gonna get there. 19 reps for Tola Maracanio. Outstanding. At 185, and he did it in about a minute plus. So just as we were excited to see Tim Paulson on that bike last night, this is where we wanted to see Tola on that barbell. Look at him. He wasn't the first one off that run, but he played it to his strengths because he knew when he got to this barbell, it was touch and go. Power snatches for Tola. Oh, test six out of the way. Test seven now coming. And we're going to throw things back to the second pairing of athletes where it's only 10 reps and then they get to work. And they're going to be working a lot harder on the run than they were previously for the first pairing for test number six. And expect all of these athletes to get the touch and go going early. And the six minute time cap, probably a little bit generous. Just a one minute transition here, although these athletes have been waiting for the entirety of the last test. These are two different tests. Test six is now done. We have unofficial results on that. Proven, 33 reps, that's 100 points. Rhino with a big hundred, uh, excuse me, with a big second place, 97 points for 27 reps. Omnia hovering over that cut line, third at 25. Now we're out here going for the next 100 points in test number seven. You mentioned Omnia, they really needed to make a move today. And they're doing the right things already. Is Here that goes a Devin surprise? Kim. A surprise, Joel Christine Middleton, the first off those 10 snatches. <laughs> surprise. 
almost a little bit surprised that she did those 10 snatches instead of the max snatches. Instead, Brittany Morello went for that total. So this is where this these two tests are brilliantly programmed. Uh, hats off to Adrian Bosman, the competition director. I've talked to multiple coaches and athletes about these two tests, and they really, it, it is a thought-provoking test because where do you put your strongest athlete? And some chose to put him in test six. Some chose to put him in test seven. But it's all about setting up your teammates for the success, the best success for them. And your more proficient runners are going to be able to hold their body position for a lot longer. Those that haven't done a lot of sprinting in their time, you'll find that their technique's going to break down just a little bit. Winter Rodriguez, she is doing the move fast part of her team's game, even though it says lift heavy at the top of the screen. Move fast, lift heavy for the Long Island based squad. And a shout out to Winter Rodriguez, a former basketball player, so she is used to these sprints out here. Qualified to be a member of the Move Fast Lift Heavy team through a combine. Christian Harris said, all right, I gotta find some ladies to have on my team and literally solicited applications. Winter joined the team last year. They did the same thing this year and got a handful of responses and they wound up with Chloe Govan Dimit. It was awesome. The games the last two years with Pro One Montreal. There's the handoff to Will Carter. 10 snatches at 185. Time's very comparable with the other heats. It's going to come down to this last sprint. How quick can you get on and off the barbell and into your rhythm of the run, the short ones first, the long ones a little bit later on? And like we talked about, in a team, it is about setting them up, giving them seconds ahead is going to help keep that lead and keep your gas, your foot on the gas pedal to keep on going. There goes Josh Alshaba in the red leader shorts for CrossFit Invictus. What's great visually about this test, you can see exactly how this field is playing out as Josh Alshama just continues to run away from everybody. And Jamie, you think about moving the goalposts and challenging the athletes. They look up every time they go to the start and the distance is longer. What does that do to you mentally? It is, it, it is a mental grind to have to go longer. It's like when the reps in a workout are go higher, 9, 15, 21, instead of the other way around. But you see for Josh out here in the lead, I talked to him before this test, and he was excited. This team as a whole loves running, and they knew that Jorge was going to go out in front just to make sure he was fresher for those on his hamstring. He said it's, everybody's feeling good. They're really excited for this, and consistency is the name of the game, which he looks pretty consistent out there running. Time to beat 424 as Ashama legging it out on his fifth and final shuttle run to complete this 400 meters of work. 424 should be no issue. He'll hit the burners all the way back to the finish line. CrossFit Invictus, you can't get caught if all you do is lead. That's another test win for the San Diego crew. Navy Blue in second. That'll be second place for the test as well, so they'll defend their silver medal spot at the moment. Big finish for CrossFit Francos, the Misfits, coming in fourth in this heat. They're in 10th overall at the start of the day, and East Nashville proven. Guys, they came in as the heavy favorites. Not that seventh place in that heat is bad, but they've got work to do right now, and you've got to start putting up numbers that'll get you moving. Well, Tim Paulson said it in the interview last night. He said, we are only at the halfway point, and now we can really get to work to the back end of the competition and really make a move. And this will be a tough finish here for no shortcuts as Julian Kromashvitz comes through. They had quietly crept up into fourth place overall at the end of day two of competition. And that is 10th in the heat. Josh, he wants that number one spot, doesn't he? Not just now, in the back end of Sunday as well. And I appreciate the teams that call their shots. And it didn't work out for Oslo Navy Blue last year, but they said, 2021, we were happy to podium. 2022, we wanted to win. They fell just short. Alshama said, I don't like bronze. They came back as a foursome this year, dedicated to win. They've called the shot. Right now, they're swinging for the fences. I just love the fact that they're bringing the same team back and going, hey, we did okay last year. 
Let's go and see if we can go one better. So this is going to start off with, they started out with Devin Kim on these touch-and-go snatches, switching over to Josh Alshama to bring it home for him. He took off for that run, took an early lead, and never lost it, looking very comfortable out there on that run, pushing the pace all the way to the finish line. Their team so excited, knowing that they get to keep those white leader jersey shirts on for their team. Four hundred total points up for grabs on moving day. Adrian Bosman took the moving day title to heart when he programmed this third day of competition. Lots of opportunities, but Invictus seizing that opportunity in the moment. Let's go down to Lauren Smith. She has CrossFit Walleye. They're trying to move. I do indeed. An unofficial second and third in back-to-back -back tests six and seven. Mia, you came into this just in the top 10 on day number three. How important are those back-to-back -back results for the ambitions you have in this competition? I mean, today is a massive day for us. We have 400 points up for grab. Um, we knew this would be a very good event for us, and we think that remaining over today will also be really good. This is the closest thing Europe has to a super team, Sam. You're all traveling from around the world to train in Sweden at CrossFit Walleye. Tell me how big that is for the individual. How much of your life you're putting on hold to make this dream a reality? Well, first of all, we're, we are a super team. <laughs> we are class. Uh, second of all, I mean, we all had different levels of sacrifices, and I hate the word sacrifices because it, we choose to do this. But um, yeah, we put a lot on the line, I guess, for this year. Antonia, obviously, you both as females have blown us away when it comes to the lifting. How are you at Big Bob? Oh, we're very good. We got strong legs. <laughs> well, that's an understatement based on what we've seen so far. Joshua doesn't want to speak, but guys, congratulations. You have had a phenomenal couple of days. We can't see, wait to see what you've got coming up next. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if you're ever visiting Vastara, Sweden, and you drop into CrossFit Walleye, they have to. you got to print shirts now that say, uh, we are a super team on the front, <laughs> and on the back, we are class. <laughs> Do it. Send us one. I'll pay the shipping internationally. <laughs> Talk about calling your shot. There it is. <laughs> Those are the standings for test six. CrossFit East Nashville, the proven screw, uh, the proven crew with uh, 33 reps to win that one. And then Invictus in 407 pretty comfortably over Oslo Navy Blue picks up 100 points as well. Our full coverage, statistics, schedule, leaderboards, all of that information is online at games.crossfit.com. But listen, local time here in Madison, Wisconsin, it's 9.51 in the morning. We're going to like nine o'clock tonight. So we are just getting started. Grab some popcorn. Get yourself set. Men and women, test number seven. That's coming up next with their cross country 5K. Rolling along with the 2023 Noble CrossFit game. Games.crossfit.com. We'll talk to you throughout the rest of the moving day. The 2023 Noble CrossFit Games are presented by Noble the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. GoWad, the mobility app designed for athletes. G-Shock, challenge your limits. The official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games. The U.S. Army, be all you can be. For more information, visit GoArmy.com. And RP Strength, the official nutrition coaching platform of the CrossFit Games.
before we do that, let's welcome Christian to our class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can do it. We talk a lot about community with CrossFit. I think for a lot of people, their first introduction to the community is inside their affiliate, where they build relationships with people, they sweat together, they suffer together, and they build, in many cases, lifelong friendships. The community exists uh, in events like this, um, and coming together, I think, is really important, where you get all of these different essential and important parts of the community. What makes CrossFit so special come together and uh, create this incredibly magical experience. So you walk in a, around an event like the semis, and obviously we see these incredible athletes on the floor um, showing us what's possible, uh, uh, inspiring so many people to, to get involved with CrossFit to give it a chance. You see uh, the coaches who are there, who, you know, without whom uh, these life-changing results for these great athletes, but also members of the community wouldn't be possible. There's the affiliate owners, how many of our athletes, members of our community, their journey starts in their local affiliate with that owner and their coaches who are willing to invest the time and the energy uh, to help change people's lives. Uh, it's the volunteers, you know, men and women behind the scenes who are coming together to put on this extraordinarily complicated and incredible event um, that is so inspiring for so many people. Uh, and there's us at CrossFit at headquarters, um, hopefully playing a role in, in bringing all those amazing parts of the community together uh, in a celebration of CrossFit. And without all of those individual parts working in harmony, sometimes with a little tension, that's part of what makes it interesting, none of this happens. And so these events are such an amazing reminder of uh, a manifestation of the community that exists outside the affiliate that brings those 14,000 gyms that we have changing lives all around the world together in a moment of celebration.
It's a beautiful day for a run. Day number three of competition for the individuals kicks off here on Saturday morning at the 2023 Noble Cross at Games from Madison, Wisconsin. Thanks so much for being with us, everybody. It's time for individual test number seven, the 5K run. We will start here at the North Park of the Alliant Energy Center. We have a packed house here for you, not only in the stadium, but here in the booth. I'm Sean Woodland with Stacey Tovar. Nikki Brazier and Mike Arsenault are down on the competition floor, and we also have the subject matter expert from aerobic capacity, our good friend Chris Inshaw in the booth. We'll hear from him in just a second. But coming into the day, it's Emma Lawson, who is your overall leader. Started off well, then had a couple finishes outside the top 10, but she is back on track. She sure is. Six tests down, top 15 in every single test. She's first in the ride, 15th in the pig chipper, 13th in the inverted medley, the alpaca redo, she's fourth, ninth in the ski bag, and Helena last night taking a fifth. And it is Emma Lawson who sits atop the overall standings, but not by much, 477 points. She's only 19 up on Alexis Raptis, who has led for the majority of this competition, and Laura Orbach is just 20 points back. And Alex Gazan is only 27 points back. So a lot needs to be decided here over these final two days as far as the podium race is concerned on the men's side. And Roman Krennikov has been the picture of consistency throughout this entire competition. 100 points already in his favor. We've got two more days of competition, though. Six tests down, fourth in the ride, first in the pig chipper, fifth in the inverted medley. The alpaca redo took a ginormous first, ninth in the ski bag, and then fifth in Helena. And right now, Roman Krennikov has really separated himself from his fellow competitors. He's the only guy who has every finish inside the top 10. He has a 100-point cushion on Jeff Adler, who sits in second place. Adler's only 11 clear of Chandler Smith for second. Jay Crouch, he's been a surprise. He sits in fourth, and it's Brent Fakowski rounding out the top five with 405 points. Test number seven for the individuals. It has been programmed more than 100 times on CrossFit.com. It's a 5K run. Another classic benchmark. It doesn't get any simpler than this. A 5K run. See who can do it the fastest. Recipe for success here, presented by Trifecta. Build your pace each lap. That first lap is going to be a feel for it. Keep your feet moving throughout. There's a lot of uneven surfaces. I completely agree that you must have perfect pacing strategy in order to get to the edge of your limits in this workout. Let's bring in Nikki Brazier down on the field. Guys, a little bit of a shakeup in the women's leaderboard to mention this morning. Last night in the Coliseum, we saw Ellie Turner clearly struggling. She had some tape on her back. She was jogging with a little bit of a limp. Seems like she may be struggling with a back injury of some sort. So at the end of competition last night, she actually went over to the competition team and withdrew. That allowed this woman right here, Kelly Baker, who was sitting in that 31st spot, now to move up into the cut line. I talked to her before this run is getting going, and she said, she actually already made peace with getting cut, so everything from here on out is just a wonderful opportunity. Thank you, Nikki. All the athletes, men and women, will be running this together, not competing against each other. The men will be in front, two rows of them, with the highest ranked men in the front, then two rows of women behind them. And we are underway. How about that start? Roman Krennikov, right next to Jeff Adler. One and two side by side. The other yeah, host is out front as well. Talked to Jeff Adler yesterday. He says he's going to try and win this thing. I find it interesting. I don't think that Roman Krennikov even has a watch on. No gear. The guy's just going completely raw. Getting after it. Roman Krennikov is a front runner. He loves being in front, he loves to lead. Well, there are no markers out on the course, as we know, Chris, so why not just go for it? Just lead the pack and lead the way. Oh, boy. You know what? There's still so much work to be done. I mean, one of the things that everybody is concerned about that is running is the neurological damage from this event, knowing they have to go into Olympic total tonight. And don't forget test number eight, the 
intervals that's coming up after this. But Chris, when you look at a 5K, obviously everyone knows 400. They know how to pace an 800. What's the best way in your experience to attack this race? And they've got an opportunity for about the first 10, 12 seconds with that phosphagen energy system to really go out and get that open air. That's what you need to do and then settle. The key in this event, you must be patient for that 60 to 90 seconds to allow the aerobic system to get warm. The kiss of death will be you're going to throttle too hard and you're going to go over to the limit and now you're going to end up shutting down and underperforming patience. The athletes will make three trips around the circuit here. That was enter into the North Park at the completion of every lap. Mike Arsenault is down there with more on the fans who will be lining the course. Mike. Thank you very much, Sean. It's currently 73 degrees Fahrenheit, 23 degrees Celsius, so the most comfortable daytime conditions we've had so far this week. Another cool aspect of test number seven is the access for the fans. The athletes are running right by us through the middle of the RV campground. They'll do this each and every lap, so these fans will get up close and personal. The most difficult part for the athletes will be avoiding the smell of cooking bacon through the RV park. We'll see if they can avoid that. I definitely, for one, will not be able to resist. Thank you, Mike. As Roman Krennikov, Jeff Adler, Lazar Jukic is up there along with Pat Vellner. I believe that's Uldis Upniks there on the So they're right outside. now they're right now running up the steepest part of this entire course. The course goes from really the bottom where the road was. It rises about seven meters and then it immediately drops back down again. But if there's a move to be made, that's an opportunity on that hill. Mike mentioned about the weather. The weather is really good, but there is about an eight to nine mile an hour wind. And unfortunately, that wind is going to be in the face of these athletes for the bulk of the time when they're up on that grassy section. A G-Shock is giving you the chance to win a new G-Shock watch a CrossFit Level 1 seminar and more than $400 in CrossFit swag. Scan the QR code on your screen now. Terms and conditions apply. As the athletes are making their way off of that grassy, I would say probably 200, 300 meter trip there, um, they're coming onto some loose gravel, a little bit of loose rock before they find some pavement again. Having run it, I would say the grassy area is about a 300 meter stretch. This loose gravel is about another 300 um, before they make their way back into North Park Stadium here. This, this, this course has been perfectly designed. So the last 400 meters is slightly downhill and it's gonna encourage these athletes to really push. And that at the end of this event, could be highly detrimental. You've got to be thinking strategic here. There's a lot of work yet to be done at the CrossFit Games. I anticipate though, Chris, after they get through this first lap, because the athletes know nothing about this course. They see pictures and that's about it. Unless they've got somebody else doing a little scavenger hunt for them. After this first lap, I do anticipate paces to kind of increase a little bit um, through the second and the third lap. Agreed. These athletes have had plenty of people that have gone out and they know the, this course backwards and forwards. They know the actual distance. By the way, speaking of distance, I did uh, talk to J-Mac about the measurement of this course and they wheeled it three separate times. So this course, it's spot on based upon their wheel. I want to... I want to point out what I just saw. Jeffrey Adler is coaxing Roman Krennikov. He sure is. Let's not forget, in event 10 in 2021, it had a three mile run broken up into one and a half mile increments with some Toda bars sprinkled in there. Adler took eight. Lap one of three is down for the leaders for the men. It looks like Emily Rolfe is your leader for the women. She's ahead of Justin Medeiros as they exit the stadium here at the North Park. Emily Rolfe is on the right side of your screen. 
Emily, no surprise that she's in front here. Absolutely. Emily won the Ruck Run in 2019. She also won Event 10, which was the one-point mile run sprinkled with the Tota Bar there in 2021. Running is her jam. And Rolf is looking to move her way back up the overall standing. She was in a podium position early on, but since finishing seventh, in the inverted medley, she's gone 30th, 33rd, and then a 14th last night in Helena. So looking to score some points here in test number seven. You can see the fastest 5K times in the bottom left-hand part of your screen as every division completed this test. 17.36.03 seconds from Adam Dijon in the 35 to 39-year-old division, the best time that we have, we have seen. Now, you mentioned Jeffrey Adler as you take a look at Brent Fikowski and Nick Matthew. And you see Emily Rolfe is your female leader. Behind her is Noah Olson. Look at Emily Rolfe and look, how, look at her power output. Look at the amount of power that she's able to put into every step and compare it to the men that she's running next to. The men look heavy. They look like they're sinking into every foot strike, almost like they're running in soft sand. That's the difference between the two of them. She is right now on her game. She looks amazing to me. And here's the deal, guys. Okay, in that 2021 event, the event 10, Tota Bar and running, there's no Tia, there's no Haley, there's no Christy Aramo, there's no Kristen Holte, there's no Sam Briggs, but there is a Gabby Magala. But however, she took first. The next person in line is anybody's ball game here. Second of three laps here for the 5K. Jeff Adler has moved in front of Roman Krennikov. We talked to Jeff Adler last night after he took Helena, and he said that he intentionally baited Roman into going faster than he wanted to in the second round of that test. And he knew in that round, he knew then that he was going to win. I had a chance to catch up with Jeffrey Adler after the bike event, and he noticed in the most difficult section of the bike event where you had to push it up that hill before crossing that second hurdle, that every single time on that, Roman got dropped. That hill hurt Roman, and Jeff knows that. He's such a smart athlete. He really is a smart athlete. I mean, I think, Stacy, that was the key to your success too, right? You were smart. You used, like, you your, took your, those moments at, as an advantage, for sure. Yeah, you were definitely scoping out the field and eyeing your athletes and competitors. Perfect Hydration is the official water partner of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. And the QR code on your screen for more. So what I'm looking for here is, is just look at Roman and the heaviness of every step that he's taking. He's, he, it's, it's lethargic almost. And you want to look at the other athletes and compare who has that spring-like effect that, that they have jumped, they've got that bounciness in them. That means that their neuromuscular system is firing. They're sequencing muscles properly. And that is the athlete that's the threat. I mean, look at Roman's posture. The head is dropping, the shoulders are rolling in. There's fatigue mounting. Same thing with Velna, right? They're starting to hinge at the waist. They're hinging at the waist because they're trying to change the muscle groups that are allowing them to run. Top five of the men are Jeff Adler, Yellow Hosta, Lazar Jukic, then Roman Krennikov, and Pat Velner. And Jeff Adler in second place has a 100-point deficit he's got to make up on Roman Krennikov. He can't do that in one test, but he needs to start chipping away at it. And right now he's getting a little help from Hosta and Jukic. Chris, what's the first thing, the first thing that you see? I know you mentioned some things that you were looking at, but the first thing that you see that, that lets you know that, all right, someone's starting to struggle a little bit. Well, first of all, what you have to notice is that there's been a dramatic acceleration in intensity, speed, and look who's been driving that right now. Adler is no longer turning around, seeing who's with him, right? He was toying with the field, in my opinion, in that first lap, right? It was almost like a game for him. Now. I think that he's putting on his competitive mask and he wants to go. But remember, Adler's strategic. He's thinking of points. And if he just blows up and goes off in front, the athletes behind him will go, just let him go. So he's trying to coax people 
because Adler wants the advantage in the next events. There's and your women's leader, Emily Rolf, who at the last check was 11th overall. That's incredible. I ran into Emily a couple of days ago when she said, this is my event. Let's send it down to Nikki Brazier on the field. Guys, you can hear it, and if you pay close attention, it almost seems like the athletes pick up a little speed as they run through the North Park here. The crowd is going crazy as the athletes re-enter the stadium here. And that's part of what makes this course really special here is running through this section of the North Park. But you've got to wonder if that little extra energy boost is messing up some of their plans going into this. Chris, I'm wondering, are some of the athletes a little bit a little bit hurt from the last couple days? Is that affecting their pace? as they go through this 5K? You know, what's interesting is last night after that sandbag lift, I went into the athlete warm down area and they're destroyed. They're so destroyed and this event has scares them more than any of the other events. And then of course they announced box jumps and then the Olympic total today. Now these athletes for the first time have fear. I, I, I want to point out something that we saw in the, uh, the transition here after they passed this and they're now starting the second lap, there's water available to these athletes. Jeffrey Adler was the only one that didn't take water. I noticed that, Chris. I did notice that. Hey, but let's not sleep on Lazar, guys, and Hostick. Yep. Um, you know, Lazar won event 10, which included, again, the, those toes to bar in the three-mile trek. Oldest, I don't know where Oldest is, but he took third in the... Uh, in that event, he took third in the Ruck in 2019, first in the Shuttle to Overhead in 2022, ninth in Helena. So he's got a bit of an engine on him. Maybe he's saving it for this last lap here. Right, same thing Ducic. Ducic last year put the hammer on Adler, right, in that capital event and hurt Adler. And so you have to respect that. We heard Nikki mention the fans in the North Park here. But Noah Olson, as you would expect, acknowledging them as he worked his way through the North Park. also making his 10th straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games. And I talked to him about a week or so before he made his trip out here to Madison. He said he's, he's focused more on, on having fun and enjoying the experience. We also saw Chandler Smith a while ago. He was lurking behind Velder and Krenikov. Remember that Chandler Smith comes in in third place overall, 432 points. So he's looking to put some distance between himself and the men chasing him for that third and final podium spot. You see Chandler there in the background. Let's send it down to Mike Arsenault out there on the course. Well, our top two men on leaderboard, Roman Krenikov and Jeffrey Adler. Adler looks very comfortable. He's pretty much led this race thus far wire to wire. Conversely, Krenikov trying to shake out his arms, just gulping air. It looks very uncomfortable, and we're seeing the distance between Adler and Krenikov start to spread out a little bit, and more importantly, starting to see some male athletes get in between them, which is key for Adler to try and trace, chase down Krenikov over these final two days. That's an incredible observation, because remember, the CrossFit Games is an endurance competition and you have to have great endurance. And one of the main factors in endurance is your ability to recover, right? It's a major measure of aerobic fitness. And if Roman Krenikov is struggling now, that is going to show his inability to recover going into the next event. Remember, we're only halfway. Now Yella Hosta has made a move on Jeff Adler for the lead here. But let's not count Adler out there, one Helena last night, and applying both shorter distance and longer distance here today with this 5K. My girl Emily Rolf coming in 15th overall after her second lap. Rolf taking second in the ride, 12th in the pig chipper, 7th inverted medley, 30th. The El Pacaridu, 33rd, ski bag, and then 14th last night in Helena. And there is Emily Rolf, your leader right now for the women. Looks great. Just pushing through the floor, just pushing that ground away behind her. And very relaxed. So you know when athletes get fatigued because the shoulders gradually start to rise. And that, unfortunately, that creates a restriction in the leg's ability to move. And behind her, you can see 
Katrin Davis' daughter, Ariel Lowen, Gabriella, our leader, Emma Lawson. Well, Emily Rolfe on the left side, if you remember last year after the, the, the bike to work event, she had to withdraw and had to go have emergency surgery because of a blood clot in her arm. And she, at that point, after that event, she went to the medical crew and said, my arm is blue, I don't know what's going on here. And then that's what it, what triggered the whole surgery and the, uh, the scramble that ensued after that. And yesterday, or Thursday after the first test, she went to the medical team and said, look, my arm is pink, it looks fine. Yellow Host is gonna be the first man in, and Yellow Hosta is gonna take the 5K and lock up 100 points. And the rookie looking to move inside the top five here. And here comes Jeff Adler. Adler's gonna finish second. And Roman Krennikov is only gonna surrender three points to Jeff Adler as Krennikov found a second gear to get himself across the finish line. And now Lazar Jukic will be fourth. And where's Patrick Velner at? Here, well, here comes, comes Brent Krakowski, Krakowski here Chandler comes Smith. Jay Crouch is going to pass Smith, and then Uldis Ulkins is across. And here comes Will Moran. Where's Velder? And here comes Pat Velder. Sam Quant, that Bjorn Carl Gubinson trying to hold off James Sprague. And here comes Emily Rolf, who's going to take this test for the women. Justin Medeiros is going to try to sprint past Olsen. He's got him. He's going to run out of time to get Bailey Martin. Will Morad is in as well. Uldis Upnix came across. And there's Luke Parker. Now Heinrich Hapalainen is coming in. Yoda Koski is in, Aunt Haynes. Catherine David's daughter is going to come across, followed by Ariel Lowen. So a great finish there for Catherine David's daughter. And Emma Lawson is across. There's Sydney Wells, who was the last woman to survive the cut. Danielle Brandon is in, and now David Shirunke. Now Dallin Pepper. And now Emma Carey sprinted the finish. Laura Horvath is in. I believe that was Alexia Williams and Paige Semenza who came in. We are at the 19 minute mark. Elisa Juliano. There's Elisa Juliano. And now Jamie Simmons behind her. Shelby Neal is in. Spencer Panchik, Alex Gazan. Now it's Yella Hosta with the top time for the men. It is now, it's Emma Tall working her way into the North Park here. 16.39.68 seconds for him. He's going to get the win. On the women's side, we're still waiting for the official times for them, but we do know that it was Emily Rolfe who came across first, and I believe Katrin Davis' daughter was second. Now here comes Annie Thoris out of making her way into the North Park, former two-time champion. Has competed in three different decades at the CrossFit Games. That's absolutely incredible that she's been able to accomplish that. 
There's more. It's Fee Big behind her. More finishers coming in now. There's Amanda Barnhart. Amanda Barnhart came in in 25th place overall. We do have another cut tonight down to 20. So right now she's on the wrong side of that. But we do have the Olympic total coming up tonight. That's, that's a test she should do very well in. And now here's Bailey Rail. We have three men who went sub-17, Hosta, Adler, and Krennikov. And as far as the women go, we are still waiting on their final times to be updated. Now keep in mind, our age group qualifiers, our fastest male, Adam DeJong, in the 35 to 39 age group, 1736. Second fastest male, Caden Hogan, 16 to 17 age group, 1746. Our fastest females come to us, Mira Varga, 14 to 15 age group, 1908. And the second fastest female in my age division here, 3539. And the winner of my age group, Lori Clement, 1957. Impressive times, Chris. Impressive times. Extremely. <laughs> Now Alexia Williams is coming in. It was Carolyn Stanley who finished earlier. And now Christine Kohlenbrander is across. When did you do it? Over there? Yellow Hosta was your fastest athlete out of anybody here. And the rookie from Belgium picks up his first career test victory. Emily Rolf is going to win for the women, and Emily Rolf is with Nikki Brazier. Emily, you called your shot on this one, and it comes as no surprise. We know what a great runner you are, but you've been through so much already in the last couple days. So what made you particularly confident about this test? Um, I think just everyone's hurting, everyone's sore, everyone's cramping, so it's like we're all fresh, it's still the same race. <laughs> Last year, obviously, you had a tough cut to your season, a really devastating injury that puts you into emergency surgery. So what are your goals for this season now that you're back? Um, you know what, I'm just enjoying being back out here and I'm not taking it for granted. It's amazing. Congratulations, we'll send it back up to Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Emily Roth with a test win, and just a reminder, today is Global 5K Day. You run a 5K today, you can log your time in the CrossFit Games app to receive a special offer. We had a group 5K going on here yesterday. Someone tried to rope me into that. Luckily, I was working. Shame on you. I did it. I'm Jesus. sure you did. You probably do that every morning. Yeah, that's uh, that is, uh, not in my wheelhouse. Let's just send it down to... Mike Arsenault, who is with a man who apparently had this event in his wheelhouse, Yella Hosta. Thank you very much, Sean. Yella, typically rookies at the CrossFit Games are not used to being in the top 10, not used to pushing toward the podium, especially on the weekend. Eighth place coming in, 100 points there on test number seven. will get you closer to the podium. Why are you so comfortable here in Madison at your first appearance at the CrossFit Games? I knew for taller people it's harder to get at the Games. But once I'm at the games, it's all the things I like, all the outside, outside things. So I'm re really excited being here and looking forward to the coming test. On test number seven, it was quite the race between you, Adler, and some of the other top men. When did you decide to push for that first place position on the final lap? We practiced the last 5K, like last week. I knew which paces I could keep, and I was looking all the time to my watch. And we were like below that pace, so I had something left in the legs. I was waiting for somebody to attack. That was Adler, and once I feel he slowed down, then I dropped the hammer, and he quickly loosened. With then the last adrenaline, the, the crowd, and yeah. 
Ha having something left in that 5K is very impressive. I think we're going to hear from you a lot more over the final day and half of competition. Yella, congratulations. Thanks. Yella Jose, his first career test win, 1639.68 seconds. Jeff Adler's going to carve three points off of Roman Krennikov's 100-point lead. Lazar Jukas takes fourth, and Brent Fakowski will finish in fifth place. For the women, first test win of these 2023 Noble CrossFit Games for Emily Rolf. Katrin David's daughter will take second, followed by Ariel Lowen. Alexis Raptis continues to be impressive here, and then it's Gabby Magawa in fifth. Test seven is done. Two more tests remain for the individuals here. Chris, thanks so much for hanging out with us. We always appreciate you being here. Thank you, Sean. Coverage will continue here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. So stay with us, everybody, on day number three in Madison, Wisconsin.
Know the feeling? Know the feeling. This is the guy right here that I told you about, all right? <laughs> This guy, when anyone walks in here and they tell me, I can't do this, I'm like, this is the guy. Go, go, talk, go talk to Henry. When I think of CrossFit, I think of Henry. And when we open these doors, that's the person that I wanted to serve. The day I walked into CrossFit Mentality, I could not air squat to a 45 pound plate on top of an 18 inch box. You could imagine what it was like for me to just get out of a chair, stand up. I remember him telling me that he hadn't climbed a ladder at work and he couldn't even remember when. And even going downstairs, he was holding on to the railing and going down sideways. At that time, I really thought that, that this is what getting older was, you know? And obviously I was very wrong. So instead of pulling right to here, I want you to think, try to pull a little bit higher across your chest. There you go. Let's get one more big pull. Nice, and relax. I think the most important thing when you have somebody that's walking into your gyms is you gotta build the trust. And you gotta explain to them what your goal is. And when Henry came in, I told him, this is gonna change your life. But you need to trust me and you need to show up. He happened to be in the lobby when I came in to basically sign up for my on-ramp, and he just had a short 30 seconds with me, but he said something to me that I'll never forget. He was asking me how I feel and why I'm here, and I told him I have some bad knees, and maybe we could correct it. And he looked at me and said, you stick around here long enough, and you probably won't need knee replacements, and the man was correct. Focus today is gonna be trying to improve our positioning on our squats. So what we really want to do is get the ankle nice and warmed up along with the hips and everything else. And then the more we can get this elbow down towards this toe, you can see that knee's starting to track out. That's what's going to open that up for that overhead squat here today. Dude, you're clearing your feet so well now. Like that looks easy. That looks easy, bro. That looks easy. That's what I'm talking about. He's always got a smile on his face now, and I think he's just happier and hungrier than ever because once he started to see that progression happen, it was just, it was so life-changing. He's like, I want more, I want more, I want more. And he just kept investing and doubling down. Oh, now you're just showing off. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> nice, dude. All right, so look at the difference here now, all right? And then even on this next one, when you brought your hands overhead, that was... Well, I didn't want to scab my nose. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> when I came to Mentality, that just, it was like I jumped on a train and, and all that just changed. And every day was better. You know, I, I, all of a sudden I could do this and all of a sudden I could do that. One more set, last one. Getting to see the progress over five years of just nonstop work showing up not missing and doing the things that he needs to do, and then getting to see how it changed his life. That to me is like winning the CrossFit Games. Cool, well, that's all I got for you. Okay. Good job. Thanks, buddy. There is
is a six word phrase that we say. Uh, what is CrossFit? CrossFit is constantly varied functional movements that are executed at high intensity. Es una definición de cinco segundos que dice todo, pero no satisface a nadie. It's a strength and conditioning program that mixes weightlifting, calisthenics, powerlifting, running, rowing, biking, and a whole bunch of different ways so that you get a broad, broad, broad range of fitness and you're never bored with your workout because they're changing all the time. At the end of the day, it's just working out with a good bunch of people, having a sweat, letting off some steam, and getting healthier and sexier at the same time. It's family, it's community, it's fitness. It's a no BS approach to bettering your life, not only inside the walls of the gym, but also outside the walls of the gym. You have to realize that when you step into a CrossFit gym, you're not just seeing the fittest competitive athletes in the world. You're seeing athletes that are just like you or me. The beautiful thing about CrossFit is that absolutely anyone can do CrossFit. Regardless of any demographic, age, ability level, or background. Todos não como pode, é como devem, né? It is designed for anybody to take part in. If I looked at each individual person that walks in every single day here, it's like everybody's absolutely different. It could look like my 80-year-old dad. It could look like my kids. There's an option for you that fits you exactly where you are on your fitness journey. It'll meet you right where you are at, and it'll take you to places that you never even thought you could go in terms of your fitness. I've seen people change their lives. I've seen people lose 50 kgs, relationships be created, babies being born from people who've met at the gym and you know, got married, etc. Para mí, CrossFit fue encontrar una familia fuera de mi casa. <laughs> I can, I can honestly say, hand on heart, that it will change their life. Not because it's just a fitness program, not because of the community, but because the greatest adaptation that occurs in CrossFit happens right here.
200 points already grabbed in team competition so far today. It's only 11 o'clock local here in Madison, Wisconsin. 2023 Noble CrossFit Games here in North Park and the Alliant Energy Center. Alongside Jamie Hagia, CrossFit Games team competitor, and Jeremy Austin, CrossFit Games 2011 team alternate, Lauren Smith is down on the field. My name is Joel Gadet. Glad to have you along with us today with CrossFit Invictus. Staking out a 40-point lead after their win in Test 7. CrossFit Oslo Navy Blues, second place in each of the last two CrossFit Games. They're ahead of CrossFit East Nashville, proven an affiliate making their debut, but with veteran athletes here in 2023. Test number eight, we see the first emergence of some critical team implements. Big time, Joel, and the bob is nothing more than just pure grunt and teamwork. 126 feet to push it down North Park. 10 synchro muscle-ups required by all four team members at the same time. On the rings, 15 worm clean and jerks. Three rounds of that, then pushing Bob 42 feet back. 18 minutes for our time cap. Jamie, where do you even begin to tackle this? You have to ma manage your muscle ups. If you're not planning on going unbroken, you need to be smart in how you're breaking up your reps and how much time you take in between those reps. And then you have to push the pace on the worm clean and jerks and Bob. Down to 30 teams, so three heats. Dakota CrossFit jumped into the cut group in the final test yesterday after being on the outside looking in. They are in lane seven. Same for the Rhino Dogs in lane four. Plus 6'4 six, Army, 6'4 six, Army Endgame. They also had to play with the cut line yesterday. They now, did. Now, if I... this is a team that you want grunt work and it to hurt. The 15th and 7th position for the 6'4 Army today in Test 6 and 7. Their best finish yet in 7th position, and they are moving up. They're going to miss that cut line in 18th overall. And now PSC, they're dangerously close to the cut line for today. Sorry, got a little excited. That grunt work that we're about to see in this hurt. Nick Anapolsky on that team holds the Guinness World Record for the most burpees in an hour with 879. So he knows how to hurt, and this is going to be exciting to watch. Yes, 879 burpees burpees in one hour for Nick Anapolsky. Now we're not doing those in this test, but it does tell us that he knows how to keep going when no one else wants to. Empty Bob, 667 pounds or 303 kilos, but no, let's throw some red plates on that. 1188 pounds, 540 kilos, and not just contending with four team members trying to push at the same time, but this sun is really starting to beat down another aspect that these teams have got to deal with this morning in North Park. So for those of you keeping track at home, 1,188 pounds, that is about 300 pounds heavier than a grand piano. Those things have wheels. Set on down to Lauren Smith. I was around the back doing a basic tally from the teams of who's had access to this implement back at home. And I think out of the entire field, no, I know that Rhino CrossFit Dogs are the only team. Christine Middleton has one at her gym, so they have been practicing with this implement for a couple of months in the build-up to the games. Christine Middleton based out of Rhode Island, so that team, although from an affiliate in Las Vegas, has trained a lot on the East Coast, where that bob would be. Now, after this bob push, 126 feet, we go to these 10 synchro ring muscle-ups. Jamie, ring muscle-ups are hard enough in their own right. How hard is it to synchronize this movement between four different people? With athletes of different heights, it makes a huge factor in this. Your kipping swing is going to be longer or shorter, take a little bit more time for some other athletes. If you get there at the top before some of your other athletes, you need to hold that top of the ring support like we saw last night until all three of your teammates get there. Ten synchronized ring muscle-ups. You can go unbroken, but with the synchronicity and the complexity therein, how do you break these up? Well, you think about working as a team. We've got the individual components and your abilities, but working as a team, 6'4", and Coach Komihana Mitchell uh, from the team based down in Christchurch in the South Island of New Zealand, works on teamwork so much. This team has been building for the last 12 months to get to this exact spot, trying to miss that cut line. Sitting in 18th right now, and another good result like they had in test number seven previously. But ensuring they do have that teamwork component together, these guys are gonna work very well. Plus six, four with a 15th and a seventh on test six and seven this morning, vaulting them up into 18th position. Now on to the worm. 
You've got sections of 100, 6, 76, 106, and 70 pounds on that worm. The skin itself weighs seven pounds. So a grand total of 365 pounds on that worm. First time we see the worm, the ultimate implement in testing teams here on day three of competition. So if you're on a team and you thought you were gonna get away without seeing this darn thing. <laughs> you are truly mistaken. 365 pounds in four segments. 100 pounds, 70 pounds, 100 pounds, 70 pounds. And Jamie, when you've got your team members, and you've got team members of different dimensions, heights, weights, widths, it's very difficult, I and mean, you've got to make sure that you can keep the position of the worm as horizontal as possible. You also think, I was one of the shorter athletes on my team, I went right in the middle, I was the second person, which is nice, it takes off some of the load on my taller teammates in front and back of me for myself. But the person in the front generally is gonna be taking a lot of that load. You see in the middle, you have a little bit of support on each side. Um, if you have never played with a worm before, this is very different than any kind of clean and jerk you would do with a barbell or a dumbbell, but it definitely is gonna take a toll on some of these athletes. You see them coming out nice and controlled pace. Oslo Nice and PFC CrossFit 3076 are both still on the ring muscle ups and PFC has just finished. So almost everybody is on to the worm as you get a look at Invictus Sea of Green. And the Sea of Green progression of height of athlete and moving upwards towards the back. So the exact opposite to what you were talking about, trying to sort of minimize the damage so much of how much weight is getting dispersed across the four team members. It's an interesting part of what Sea of Green are doing right now. It kind of seems similarly heighted on this unit. I feel like it's a good team for the worm. And you know, it definitely is. And you know, the first time we're seeing this all weekend long, you know, one of the recipes for success is push the pace, but these teams are smart. They know that this is three rounds, so this is only the first. So even though we're gonna push the pace, we have to save room in the tank to save that for later. Text Jocko to 24672 and get 30% off your order at jockofuel.com. This is a one-time use code, only good through August 9th. Jocko to 24672, get some. Joel, you mentioned moving day, day three of the CrossFit Games, and Saturday 6-4 are doing exactly what they need to do, progressing the bob down to the floor and taking a lot of time to get back. Jamie, with fatigue, obviously your legs are doing a lot of the pushing here. And the programming comes into it. Competition director Adrian Bosman has almost got this perfect for the teams over the entirety of the three days so far. They're doing a lot of upper body pulling now, getting to that extension at the top of the rings, but also having to shift and heavy implement with their legs down the field. Oh, I absolutely love the variety, variety of this. It is gymnastics. You're going to get your pull. You're going to get your dynamic, explosive movements with this warm, clean, and jerk, and then just an absolute grind in that push with the bob. Three rounds of this work on the ring muscle-ups, so 30 total synchronized ring muscle-ups, the synchronicity occurring at the top. So as Jamie mentioned earlier, if you reach the top before your teammates, you've got to hang on to that ring support until the cavalry arrives in order for that rep to count. Coda CrossFit uh, Redemption in the lead right now with 33 points, and you can see on the top of the screen, plus 6-4 is one rep behind, Einhorn four reps behind as we hit the 6.40 mark in this 18-minute time cap. Jamie, getting your synchronization, you've got a barbell, or you're doing box jumps, or you're doing something else similarly with some easy type of movement synchronizing. That's pretty easy to get done when you get to a complex movement like a ring muscle up, and they're doing a big, strong kip. Run me through how you communicate that as a four without actually talking. The nice thing about this is that they do get to face each other. So your males and female pairs are going to be facing each other. A lot of times that nonverbal communication. I see when I'm in my backswing. I know when I'm going to come up to the top and transition over the rings to lock that out. You get to visually see where everyone is and make sure that each rep counts because a no rep here would be crucial. You're looking in lane six at plus six four. They're in a dead heat with Coda CrossFit and breaking here on these sets of 10 synchronized ring muscle-ups. 
The other factor that we have to mention is that if you're doing ring muscle ups at home, you're not doing them hanging from a Zeus rig. <laughs> These are significantly longer straps, and that makes this movement significantly more difficult. If you take it back to the Olympic gymnasts who do this in competition, they actually utilize this movement to get onto the apparatus. So this is one of the easiest things that they do. For athletes here, it's a really good testing implement. It's actually probably the height of an Olympic gymnast on the still rings as well. The difference being that on the still rings, you aren't Kip. <laughs> you are not. And interesting, how last night they had to do a strict muscle up into the ring support. Here they get to use that, that kipping swing to help assist in that. I'm waiting for a Yamawaki sequence in a dismount, though. That would make my day. <laughs> we think about the number of athletes that did struggle a little bit with that ring support. The seated position last night, how much fatigue they're going to carry into today as well. And that's a matter of who's done their homework, who has been working on strict, who has been working on kipping. I know a lot of these teams have practiced a four-person synchro muscle-up. You know they have been getting their work, their warm work in because you know that's coming at the CrossFit Games. 15 worm clean and jerks. Past the nine-minute mark, this is the halfway point of this test. So you're looking at teams right now that if you factor in fatigue are going to come dangerously close to being capped in this test. Three rounds of work here at the end of, or really the middle of round two, because you still have to push the bomb. Hand is in the air for CrossFit Coda, the redemption crew. Coda is a network of six gyms starting in Oklahoma. Coda Iron View, which is the affiliate of Kevin Schutz, who's the captain of this team, is based out of Colorado. And Coda, of course, a Native American word for friend. The worm very taxing on the legs, although it doesn't really look like it. The pull from the ground, having to brace themselves, their core working over time as well. The added leg fatigue for the worm moving straight into the bob to push it down. Only a third of what they did on the way down. It's got to accumulate, surely. Oh, absolutely. That just builds up each round. You're going to see them drop this worm here. They're going to take a second to get set up. Great communication, that down sign, so they all put it down together. It's not like they're in a rush. They're going to take their time setting up, and they're going to make sure they all push with their maximum effort here. You mentioned the down sign, Jamie. And in this instance, it's less important because you're dropping the worm to advance to the big bob. But in between worm clean and jerks, the down needs to be coordinated. When you see teams dropping the worm in four different motions or in four different segments, that adds time and effort to what your workload is. And you'll see when that happens, it turns into the, the dance, the worm, where it goes up and down like that, <laughs> down and up in a different time, and that makes it extremely difficult for all these athletes to, to stay in sync and make move this one as a unit. Hand position can be put pretty much anywhere that's comfortable at the moment. You can see it. The foot position important as well. They're really loading the front of their legs with their quads and digging those toes into the ground, so not going very long in their stride length. When you're doing the worm, you're actually loading your quads as well, so this is probably adding more fatigue rather than going to the posterior muscles, which are your glutes and hamstrings. One thing that's really great is pushing and pulling is great for everybody. Anyone can load a sled, anyone can push and pull at home. Definitely will add to your training. Try this out at home, everybody. Maybe not this bob, but a push and pull. Yeah, I, I was going to say, maybe not 12 reds. <laughs> Shopping trolley, probably something similar. Probably just not this heavy, though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to push your car when it runs out of exactly. fuel. Exactly. And this is what CrossFit is. It's functional fitness. When your car breaks down, how are you pushing it? Exactly like how these people are pushing the Well, ball. some of us just try to plan around our car breaking down. <laughs> but then you've got to find three other people on the side of the road to no, help No, no, no. i got to find three other letters. It's called AAA, and there's a card in my wallet. 12 minutes into an 18-minute time-capped event. 59 reps now, 60 for Coda leading the way, plus 6-4, two off the mark. And this is our first of three heats. And not necessarily a bad thing. You see them come down, reset. They know that when you get to these portions, that you got to manage your muscle ups, right? That's part of our recipe for success. If someone hits failure, you're going to be sitting there a while, so it's smart to come down and take a break. Most of these teams went in sets of four or five. First time through, 
They're now on their third set of these synchronized muscle ups. Six four with just a really quick set of three. Got on, got off. The time under tension important. As you mentioned, Jim, managing these muscle up. This is what it is coming down to. Teamwork fairly easy with the other two implements. High skill gymnastics. A little bit of a stick in the mud as they get through this tough 18 minutes. Coda coming off of their final 10 ring muscle ups and back to the worm. We are cutting to 20 teams after competition today. So this test and one more, and Coda again is behind the line, as it was yesterday. It made the jump in the final test. And this is where athletes who are experienced, you have to rise to the occasion. You know this extra pressure of cuts once again are coming. You have to perform the best you can and give your team the best chance to make that final cut. 15 worm clean and jerks for Coda. They're being joined by the Invictus Sea of Green, but they're still several reps ahead. Got a five rep lead on plus six four, who's also now arrived at the worm and Sea of Green, one of the three teams from Invictus. Jamie, with cut lines looming at the end of today, obviously you're going to give your best effort regardless, but what does that extra pressure do to you knowing that you're trying to jump ahead of that cut line and all the other teams? It's really interesting. In some different sports, you know, you can rise to the occasion and it helps you out. It, it gives you that extra push and adrenaline that you need to do better. For most of the cases out here, these athletes, it's going to help drive them. They can't really do too much more than what, they, the, what they're capable of, right? It doesn't mean if I know the pressure's on, that doesn't mean I can do five more muscle-ups or anything like that. So we want to make sure you're sticking within yourself and within your boundaries. Hand is in the air for Coda. Just two more worm cleaning jerks for the team from Norman, Oklahoma. They'll then advance to their final big bob push, which is 42 more feet. Coda has gotten faster as this test has advanced. Their first bob push, 32 seconds. Their second bob push, 29 seconds. And they'll reach the bob here at about the 15-20 mark. So Coda will most certainly finish this test. 18 minutes is the time cap. They'll establish the time to beat heading into our final two heats. And the Bob is moving like butter here in round three. And that is called execution. That is called 1,100 pounds gliding to the finish line. Coda CrossFit Redemption into the end zone here at North Park. And the time to beat is established at 15.49. Two of those teams that are really under pressure to stay under the cut line are two teams that's head of this heat. Plus 6-4, as expected. Next team here on the Bob, Sea of Green, is coming up behind them. Plus 6-4 had a 15th place and a 7th place finish in the two tests this morning. And 16-32. Sea of Green this morning had a 28th and a 15th in our two snatch and run events. Sea of Green is done in 16.50 and change. There are two teams that are still on their muscle ups. Everybody else on the field is on their final set of 15 worm cleaning jerks or on the big bob push, but we're inside the final minute, so the cap is going to be a factor. teams finishing, others still out there doing the work, you know that this is an appropriate test because you have to push your limits to try to get within that time cap, and we are really testing these athletes' fitness out here. Einhorn CrossFit coming across the line. The Texan team, Casey Viator, 
three-time games veteran is the captain there. They are done. PSC, we talked about them, Jamie off the top, the team that knows grunt work. They're advancing onto their big bob, and I don't know if they're gonna get across in 10 seconds. And they will not. Pure exhaustion. Dakota CrossFit Redemption establishes the time to beat at 15.49. And with some odd implements to kick off day three of competition. Great battle down North Park, but 6-4 getting out to a good early lead with the synchronization on the ring muscle-ups. And then Coda getting hold of that worm in the unison. Absolutely perfect. And the battle between plus six four and Coda. So progressed the worm and the bob down the competition floor. But Coda getting out to a great lead, managing their fatigue a lot better on the ring muscle ups. And saving enough in the tank for the final push of 42 feet. Fifteen forty nine, Jamie. 40 seconds better than the next best team. That is, it comes down to, did they manage their muscle ups correctly? Were they able to keep a consistent pace on that worm and that bob? And that is exactly what they did, executed very well. Very nicely done. Heat two out here at the North Park for Team Test 8 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. We cut down to 30 teams this morning. We will cut down to our final 20 teams at the end of competition today. We have this test and another still before that sort of Damocles drops. Alongside Jamie Hagia and Jeremy Austin, my name is Joel Cadet. Lauren Smith, our reporter down on the field. CrossFit Invictus, 647 points out of a possible 700. That is pretty dominant fashion. 40 points is not a small lead. Midway through the competition, Oslo Navy Blue is in second. CrossFit Franco's the Misfits rounding out the top 10. CrossFit Walleye making a big jump up with two top fives into fourth place this morning. All right, our test description here, Jeremy, the first appearance of some pretty common CrossFit Games team's implements. The ball back onto the field of play once again, 126 feet required, 1,188 pounds to propel down North Park, 10 synchro muscle ups, 15 worm clean and jerks for the three rounds and progressing the bob back to the starting position with an 18 minute time cap. Recipe for success, Jamie Hagia, you attack this thing how on the rings? By managing your muscle ups. If you are not planning on going unbroken, you need to be really smart with how you break up your reps and how much time you take in between those. And then the second one, push the pace. We saw earlier, maybe not pushing the pace so much, pushing the bob, and slow and consistent does win the race. Our lane assignments here. We are without Invictus Unconquerable and CrossFit CLT, two teams that did compete in test six and seven this morning, but our field has thinned due to injury. So we'll have just eight teams in what should be this second heat of 10. CrossFit Omnia had a really good morning, an eighth place and a 13th place finish that has moved them off of the dangerous spot of the cut line today. And this is a team that finished third at the North America West semifinals. This is their last dance as Cooper Wise will be moving to Los Angeles, so I know that they're going to want to give it their all here. Work gets in the way sometimes. CrossFit Portee, their third year together at the games, a 12th place and a 19th place finish. They were in 15th this morning, a 21st and a 16th on this morning's two tests. Let's go down to the fourth member of our crew, Lauren Smith. Thanks, Joel. I'm joined by U.S. Army Captain Bianca Gardner. Bianca, what is the historical significance between CrossFit and the U.S. Army? 
So CrossFit and the Army um, kind of started working together. CrossFit kind of developed this methodology of functional fitness that has been really popular and kind of exploded into the Army realm. Um, it's changed our whole fitness um, approach. Uh, our fitness test, the new ACF team, mimics a lot of CrossFit movements. Um, so we kind of work closely with that. Um, mental resilience, mental toughness, um, being fit for the job. So uh, a lot of similarities there. Thank you so much for your time. We are going to have to cut it there because the athletes are just about to start. Back to you, Joel. Lauren, thank you as we are underway here in our second heat of three. This test starts by moving this 1,188 pound Big Bob, 12 red plates loaded on, 126 feet down the field. I said last time it's a little bit heavier than moving a grand piano. It is the equivalent of pushing a grizzly bear down the field. Significantly safer, <laughs> but it is the same way. On its back, probably a little uh, bit easier. Yeah, it would slide better. <laughs> Porty, one of our teams to watch. Finishing ninth, their best result so far at the CrossFit Games 2023. Obviously very strong with their legs, so this is going to probably relate, depending on their leg fatigue, of course. But one of those teams that we are going to keep an eye on and Jeremy, you're seeing some teams here have to pause and take a break as they drive this bob. Others are just pushing through to the finish. Unbroken for 126 feet. Rhino went 56 seconds on their bob in heat one. Milford just went 54 here in heat two. The nice thing about the bob is if you get down to the field and get it in position, you are not going to another leg movement right away. You're going to take a break from your lower body, and this is an upper body pulling movement in these synchro muscle ups. These are synchronized at the top, so each of the four athletes must be locked out atop the rings before dropping for the ref to count. CrossFit Milford leads the way with six repetitions, now seven. Kilo 2 and Omnia are behind. The number in the white box signifying the amount of reps behind each of those teams are with a minute and 40 seconds passed here in the first, or excuse me, in the second heat of this test number eight. You mentioned recipes to success and managing your muscle ups in heat number one. Number of these teams, in fact, all of them didn't go through the unbroken muscle ups for the three rounds. I have to manage that fatigue and it's pro progressed further and further into this grueling test. They're going to have to manage that even down to single reps, even doubles. Yeah, if your muscle ups have to go down to doubles and singles, that's completely fine as long as you do not miss. But what is smart is having a game plan going in. You see a lot of these teams going 7-3 maybe or however the 6-4. Having a plan, but sometimes we all know, sometimes you get punched in the face and your plan changes. <laughs> and you could have seen on the right side of your screen in that wide shot for CrossFit Omnia, Kelly Stone actually whiffed trying to grab the rings with her left hand. So that slows you down a little bit, messes up your rhythm, sometimes messes up your feel. CrossFit Krypton is the first team out to the worm. We did talk in the first heat about the importance of dropping the worm efficiently, though. You saw kind of an ugly drop on their first rep, much cleaner on the second. As a team, the worm, it really, the tighter and closer you guys can stay together, driving that worm up together to your shoulders, dipping and driving that worm overhead, it's going to make a huge difference in timing, tempo, and the ease of that worm that it moves at. Let's check in with Lauren. Thanks, guys. So down here, I was chatting to Bianca Gardner, who you just heard from on the live stream. She was also a semi-finals team athlete, so she understands exactly what these guys are going through. And she says to be a good teammate, it all comes down to trust and support. And that mimics exactly what she has in the US Army. It's not just within the team, but also the crowds. So when the crowds get behind athletes, that support system gives them what they need to perform at their best. Well, and not only that, Lauren, but coming from the military, remember Dave Castro was the original programmer of the CrossFit Games. That man's a Navy SEAL. What's one of the things you do becoming a Navy SEAL? Log PT. That is what the worm is meant to mimic. And if you remember when the worm first made its appearance at the CrossFit Games, it was made of wooden logs. That's right, I feel like that's a little bit rougher on the shoulders when you drop that down on you. So this worm that gives has a little bit of give is going to be not easier, but maybe feel a little bit better. You mentioned it before about Krypton and the positioning of the worm. If you keep chasing that odd object around the place, you're doing extra work. Ben Smith cleverly at the front, wearing a shirt as well, so we're not going to be slipping off the shoulders 
once that sweat starts to beat down because it is very hot here at North Park. And that's experience. When you know that these little things can help your team out of the worm sliding off your shoulders or when you get to that bob and you have that apparatus on your shoulders, that shirt will help give you a little bit of uh, a buffer, I guess, between your sweaty sweaty body and, that, and the machine. No further comment. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of sweaty bodies in the crowd too here. Not too many shirts. 18-minute time cap as Ben Smith and CrossFit Krypton almost in unison advancing this worm after 15 clean and jerks with CrossFit Omnia and CrossFit Milford. So now they'll engage in a bob push, one segment of the field that's 42 feet. That is the completion of one round of work. You have three rounds to the finish. Hand position really important as well, and depending on where your strength is, the only requirement is you can't pull the bob but your hand position, your feet position, and who you put where could be anything. CrossFit Krypton's best finish came on test one this weekend. Trying to make it through the cuts here after a 24th and a 25th place finish. We talked about this earlier, pushing the pace is one of the recipes to success, but this is also three rounds, so these teams are going to conserve a little bit of room at, or in the tank for the final second and third rounds. You need to make sure that you can finish strong. Total bob weight, 1,188 pounds. Just before that bob push of those three teams that were at the front, Milford, Krypton, and Omnia. Omnia had the fastest clean and jerk split, 30 seconds. So that's one clean and jerk with the worm every two seconds for CrossFit Omnia. That's impressive. We see these athletes communicating, right? They're all looking at each other. We talked about how do you manage these and synchro these up. It's actually that nonverbal communication, seeing each other and then symboling down, we're going to come down from the room. And you think about, look, it is hot and sweaty out here and experience a number of athletes with those sweatbands on their wrists so the sweat doesn't actually come down to your hands. Obviously, you're going to need less chalk and the chalk's not going to wipe off with that sweat coming down. Another thing to keep in mind. This is CrossFit, Jeremy. There's never enough chalk. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, more chalk. Kelly Stone is on the left. Mary Kay Drysilker is on the right. For the men, Cooper Wise on the right. Jacob Schmidt is on the left. Omnia is a legacy team here at the Games. Made its first appearance back in 2016. It had its best finish ever last year when Omnia finished seventh. And coming into this, they've kind of flown under the radar because they're one of the teams, one of seven in this year's field, that returned at least three of its members from 2022. And their whole mantra has been, yeah, everybody can talk about Oslo, Navy, Blue, and Invictus, but why not us? Things have not gone Omnia's way so far, but trying to, as the day indicates, make some moves on moving day. It is Krypton. This time unaccompanied out to the worm, Milford and Omnia still back at the rings. You talking about no reps, and there's some no reps that are more costly than others. We saw it with the rope climbs and how costly they could be. The worm not too bad, but a synchronized ring muscle up no rep is going to be putting fatigue on all four team members. And you hit that point of muscle failure and muscle fatigue. You can no longer go. You need to drop down, and it might take a second, or a couple seconds actually, before you can just jump back up and attempt it. Unlike a worm clean and jerk, where you can just pick it up and go. Again. With all eyes on that three-team race between Krypton, Milford, and Omnia, CrossFit Genos on the left side of your screen has made their way up into the mix. It was Genos and Krypton that were the first to the worm here in the second round of three. Coda went 15.49 in the first heat. Cap is 18 minutes. Cap was a factor for several teams in the first heat. Do you ever get comfortable with the worm? It's an interesting thing. I feel like I can squat all day and I am one of the, a stronger lifter, but the worm destroys me. It is something about it that I, it just exhausts me. It is so tough. It is harder to do. Odd objects are really different than barbells and dumbbells, we'll see. But if you do spend enough time on this with their teams, which most of these teams have a worm, then they definitely have the experience and know their bodies and how they can move this sufficiently. Four reps left here for Krypton. Just a couple of reps on the left side of your screen. Janas has jumped out in front. Different movements, Jamie, that you can do with the worm. 
will watch a lot of front squats. This is the clean and jerk. It's a much different tax on the body. How does the clean and jerk hit you differently with this implement that's 365 pounds? A clean and jerk is an explosive movement. And from the ground to your shoulders, shoulders up overhead. We talk about functional fitness. I like to think about this as has Ed getting your suitcase up into the uh, overhead luggage space. <laughs> a very heavy suitcase that is over the legal limit. Synchronized. <laughs> Take your Brady Bunch with you. Omnia. I mean, look at the jockeying. They were not the first or second team to the Worm Clean and Jerks here in round two. They're the first team to push Big Bob. Another 42-foot slide. They are not wearing cleats. They are wearing turf shoes. And we saw the individual athletes really struggling to drive the alpaca sled yesterday. But these shoes are made to be able to drive and create that friction against this turf surface. You notice the technique on this bob push. It's going to be short, choppy steps, trying to drive, get as much as you can all together. And once you get it moving, Jamie, you don't want to stop. Momentum is your friend. Yeah, all together, you got to push everyone. Is, and in the briefing earlier today, they said, as your hands can be anywhere you like, your placement can be anywhere you like, as long as you are all pushing, it's, a, it's legal. That's does, great. Does a running start help you? Like, can you get momentum into it, or is it? You know, the hard part of it is positioning, because look at the positioning on these people. Everyone is underneath that handlebar. So you can't, unfortunately, unless you're really skilled <laughs> and very accurate, you don't want to run into that. Omnia all by their lonesome here on the ring muscle-ups. Ten more synchronized ring muscle-ups. Their final of three rounds. The time to beat established by Coda CrossFit. 15.49 from Heat 1. And if we have any kind of gymnastics movement, this is who we want on our team, Alex Smith out there. There usually is someone who is dictating that pace and calling how many, when we're ready to go, can we come down or we, with verbal or nonverbal cues. See how far Krypton goes before, the, oh, there's the break. So they make it halfway through. Omnia has had to break twice, though. And Alex Smith, of course, with such a gymnastics background for Krypton, is quite Instagram famous for ridiculous things he does on rings. We talked about the factor of those muscle-up straps are the long ones, as well as the weather. If these straps, when you come down, if you do not come down gently, these rings will be blowing around in the wind, which will be more difficult to jump back up. And you don't have a PVC pipe to reach up there and settle them down. Here comes Omnia. Back to the worm, clean and jerks. As expected, times are continuing to pick up not only through the heats, but also through the test itself. Kilo 2 has the fastest bob push of any heat so far at 26.5 seconds. So teams are getting hungrier as this test wears on. CrossFit Omnia, Stone, Drysilker, Schmidt, and Wise. Stone is the only newcomer on this group. Competed individually last year at the semifinal and the last chance qualifier level. Not a bad athlete to have to add to your team, huh? Hey! Took the spot of Alyssa Shower, who retired, although is the team's alternate. And this is where our recipe for success kicks in. Did you save enough room in the tank to push the pace on the worm clean and jerks? They're, you're going to see them drop it. They're going to get their hands in place, set, and go all the way up to their shoulders overhead, and they're going to pick it right back up time after time again. Ten reps in the bank here for Omnia. Time to beat 15.49. That's still two minutes and change away. Empty barbell clean and jerks, not bad. Add some load, we saw that yesterday with individual components of the team and now an odd object clean and jerk where you have to move and Trying to get all four synchronized when fatigue's really starting to kick in and it's really starting to hurt these teams. And that's a tough drop for Omni because they have to advance the worm. So they just made life more difficult for themselves, but the lead's still intact. And now here they come with the time to beat at 15.49. They're gonna beat that unless this is the world's slowest big bob push, 42 feet, and they take off at 14.12. 
and look at the momentum built by Omnia. And little errors like that, when you are tired, you want to make sure that you are making correct movements and sticking to standards. This is a 25-second Big Bob push to the finish and a new time to beat at 14.35 for CrossFit Omnia. And like we talked about in the earlier heat, execution, what they were able to do, they didn't have to go unbroken on their muscle-ups, but they were smart about breaking those down. They were quick to pick up the clean worm clean and jerks, and they were able to finish strong on that ball push. Midline stabilization, probably something we haven't spoken about in regards to the bob and where you can put your spine and connect your spine to your pelvis. The girls from Krypton doing a wonderful job at the back of the bob, keeping that nice, tight lumbar position, enabling them to generate more power as they push from the back. Interestingly, Omnia and both Krypton, both males at the front and females at the back. Well, CrossFit Krypton is one of the most experienced teams of individuals. Ben Smith, Alex Smith, Erin O'Donnell, Caroline Spencer, they've all been to the games as elite individuals, but not all on a team. So they haven't necessarily used a bob before, Alex Smith has, but a new test for them. And they passed that one in 1542. Puts them in second place overall. Still ahead of the time to beat from the previous heat. Milford is in third. They have their final Big Bob push coming up. Excuse me, Crossfit and us will finish with their Big Bob push. Now Milford is in fourth with their Bob. And this apparatus isn't easy for a lot of affiliates just to have casually. If you go to a lot of gyms, you just won't see a Bob in the back. Where do you put it? Exactly, <laughs> storage space. Um, so for some of these teams, I know if you if you really have access to this, this will help out a lot. You know, CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue made one out of some yokes. Have to be inventive. Kilo two done in 16.51. Time cap is 18, that's coming up in a minute. We talked about some of these teams not finishing these tests, but that is what this is all about. This weekend is about finding the fittest out there, and truly Adrian Bosman, the competition director, has nailed that with these tests so far, pushing these athletes to their limits. And there's been talk about the verbiage of workout versus test, or event versus test. A workout is what you would do in your affiliate on a daily basis. The stimulus is to make you better. How do you continue to grow? These are not workouts. These are tests. Adrian Bosman's directive at putting these together is I want to test what you're capable of. I don't want you to work out to try to get better here. That's what you do when you show up at 7 a.m. on Tuesday. You do it one time and you're done. 10 seconds left. I don't think poor T is going to make it to the end and the time cap will leave some teams out on the field. You take a look at that, you see bodies on the floor, you see grips and shirts and hats out here. This Bob push was definitely challenging all the way across the board. CrossFit Omnia 1435 though is the new time to be. A2 tough. The sun beating down on North Park. And Krypton getting a great start. The synchronization especially with the ring muscle-ups and the worm, very good. Omnia making a move towards the midsection of the 18-minute time cap. Bottom of the screen, their bob movement, exceptional, their teamwork really good. A massive struggle for the worm on their final repetition, but enough of a lead to get back onto the bob and push to the finish. And moving day, Saturday here, day three of the CrossFit Games, exactly what Omnia needed to do. And they're finishing strong.
15.35 for Omnia, 15.42 for Krypton, and then 15.49 from Coda in Heat 1 are your top three scores right now. Then Janas files in in fourth overall. Only five teams finishing in this second of three heats. Our final heat of team test number eight here at the Alliant Energy Center's North Park in Madison, Wisconsin. First time we're gonna play with the Big Bob and the Worm, two classic team CrossFit Games implements. Alongside Jamie Hagia, she's used a worm in competition before. CrossFit Games team's athlete, Jeremy Austin, our CrossFit Games team alternate from back in 2011. Lauren Smith is our reporter down on the floor. My name is Joel Godet. Our standings through seven tests, CrossFit Invictus, a commanding lead, not an insurmountable lead. 40 points over Oslo Navy Blue, the team that's finished second in each of the last two CrossFit games. OBA, seventh for the Philadelphia team that finished 11th last year. No shortcuts as a rookie team in fifth overall for Andre Houdé and company. Team test number eight. We talk about the worm, we talk about Big Bob. Jeremy, how do we make those things unforgiving? <laughs> we push him down the field here at North Park, 126 feet required, 1188 pounds or 540 kilos. And three rounds of the 10 synchronized muscle ups with all four team members, 15 worm clean and jerks, something really comfortable. And they will bring the Bob all the way back, 42 feet at a time with an 18 minute time cap. Let's introduce you to the fourth member of our crew and head down over the field with Lauren Smith. Guys, this is 1,188 pounds of Big Bob. Now, there are certain teams out there like CrossFit Mayhem, like Move Fast Lift Heavy, who have replicas of this bad boy. The fun part for Move Fast Lift Heavy, though, is that it only goes one direction. So every time they train with it, they have to turn at a full 180 to go back the other way. But there's plenty of teams that have made makeshift yokes with a push-pull all have just been doing individual sleds. For example, Misfits and OBA. So we're gonna see a real variety and some teams who are gonna put their hands on this bad boy for the first time today. Lauren, I love calling it a replica. It makes it seem like it's a collector's <laughs> item. <laughs> it's a smaller version. <laughs> Jamie, how do we tackle it? These teams are gonna to have to manage your muscle up. So when you get there, if you're not planning on going unbroken, you're gonna to have to be smart about how you break those up in your reps and also how much time you take in between those. And the second thing, push the pace, literally and figuratively, you are gonna to have to push the pace on the warm clean and jerks and physically across that line on that bob. 14.35 is the time to beat. We have an 18 minute cap. Invictus as your overall leader is in the middle of the field in lane five. East Nashville, the crew from the proven training camp in lane four trying to make some moves. They were the heavy favorite coming in. Take a look at CrossFit Walleye, our wild health team to watch. They had a great morning. They did. They're coming in in fourth position in test six, third in test seven, 200 points up for grabs today. We know the girls are strong. Sam Stewart, great pulling strength, pushing strength. Well, we'll wait and see. Underway with our test presented by G-Shock here, the official watch of Noble, and giving you the chance to win a new G-Shock watch, a CrossFit Level 1 seminar, and over $400 in CrossFit swag. Visit gshock.com slash CrossFit G-Shock, the official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games. This is a Big Bob push all the way down the field, 126 feet. As Lauren mentioned, Big Bob weighs 1,188 pounds. For a little bit of perspective for you, the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs starting defensive line weighs 1,170 pounds. You are pushing the Chiefs defensive line down the field. <laughs> And interesting, you see right off the bat in CrossFit Invictus, they're gonna break this bob push up into 42 inch se or 42 foot segments instead of going unbroken all the way. So we'll see how strategy comes into play here. The other way to put this in perspective, as we look at teams of four moving the big bob down the field, to reposition the bobs in between heats, it took the CrossFit Games event staff 10 people per bob <laughs> to move it. Ouch, or in the words of Roman Krennikov, hard. 
Let's check back in with Lauren Smith. Guys, I caught up with Omnia, who were the last heat winners with the 1435, and I asked them the secret to success. And they said you need to break up these muscle ups smaller than you would have expected. That way, you can give absolutely everything on the worm and Big Bob. Lauren, thank you. And Jamie, that makes a lot of sense because if you remember, Omnia broke several more times than CrossFit Krypton in the last heat and caught CrossFit Krypton in the last heat. And that's the difference of taking a force break versus a planned break. If you have this plan where you're going to come down, you rest, you know you can jump right back up. But when you are forced to come down because of a no, a no rep, that is where you're going to run your problems. Taking a look at lane two, CrossFit OBA, they had the fastest bob push down from the start line, 126 feet. Took them 57 seconds to start out this test. Looking at Emily Lundberg on the left, Kelsey Keel on the right, who, by the way, at 265 pounds on her clean and jerk yesterday, set the CrossFit live competition record for heaviest female clean and jerk and the CrossFit Games record for heaviest clean and jerk. Now, another component that we haven't thought about that hasn't actually popped up in heat number one or two is the wind has really started to pick up here and the rings have started to swing around on the Zeus rig. Jamie, I know you're not the tallest athlete of all time. <laughs> How much more difficult is it being a shorter athlete when the rings are set at one height oh, and you've you got to try and settle them? You see that some of the women out there and men have risers out there, but it is definitely going to play into you. Sometimes a teammate might have to help lift you up to get up to the rings. And Debbie, every second counts out here. All these teams have mentioned every rep, every second, every test matters. And not only that, it's the time you're hanging from the rings by your, the time your teammate goes and gets on theirs. So we talked about strategy, right? And we had OBA push all the way to the finish line, maybe no, using their strengths, knowing that they have strong legs, and then they were going to take more breaks on their muscle-ups. While CrossFit and Victus took planned breaks in that bob push and went a little bit further deep in their muscle-up sets. Well, watch strategy here working with the worm. OBA had gone touch and go to start. They've now taken a huge break. Andre Houdet's no shortcuts team during semifinals went touch and go with the worm. And taking a look at them from the wide angle of the field, they are not going touch and go now. Text Jocko to 24672. That is Jocko to 24672. Get 30% off of your order at jockofuel.com. It is a one time use code, good through August 9th. Jocko, get some. We think about teams moving now onto the ball for the the push. OBA spend roughly, we'll say it's a minute, 57 seconds, a minute going all the way down. You'd expect their three segments on the way back to be roughly 20 to 25 seconds each one. Your time under tension, pushing that implement down the field, the faster you can do it, obviously, the less fatigue you're going to encounter. Oh, absolutely. You want to get this work done as quickly as possible and give yourselves time to recover. You'll see some of the transitions, unlike before, where athletes were sprinting back to the rig. You might see them walking back because they want to make sure that they are going to be fresh for these muscle ups. Looking at Oslo Navy Blue, very few teams out there have as much experience as they do on the Big Bob. Lauren talked about off the top teams that have Big Bobs or replica Big Bobs. Oslo Navy Blue, kind of jerry-rigged one out of some yokes. They know how to train to be here, currently in second place and 40 points out. Which I'll have to say, they've probably been a little bit of a dark horse and they've just been sitting away, chipping away nicely. They haven't really jumped up and surprised anyone with any great test results, but they are sitting pretty right now. Navy Blue back up to their second grouping of 10 synchronized ring muscle ups. The synchronicity at the top, so everybody must be locked out. It doesn't have to happen in sync. You just all have to get there before dropping into your next rep. Move fast, lift heavy. Also pushing the pace. Right now, your leader is at 32 reps with Invictus and Navy Blue one rep back. And when you think about a test like this with three rounds in it, it's not necessarily who is winning the first round or the second round. It comes down to the experience and who has saved some in their legs and to be able to finish this next round of muscle ups. They, these athletes know that they still have 10 more muscle ups on top of this. 
Talked about the variety of polling in these tests. Adrian Bosman, competition director, had them do strict muscle ups into that ring support last night. Today, they get to do a kipping swing where they're going to get into a nice arch position, get into their hollow, and then transition over the top and lock that all together. How does that assist help? progress the athlete further down the field, the kipping movement. It definitely is going to help propel your body more. You're going to think about a pull-up. We Doing 20 strict pull-ups versus 20 kipping pull-ups is going to be much more difficult. There are your overall leaders in that white leaders jersey. Invictus has donned that uniform since test number three. Devin Kim, former teen athlete. Brittany Weiss, Josh Alshama, and Jorge Fernandez, their second year together as a unit. And here's the problem if you're some other team trying to catch a 40-point lead for CrossFit Invictus. They're not given ground. A third and a first in the two tests this morning. You can't catch somebody that's running faster than you. I spoke with Josh Alshama before this earlier in the day, and he said they weren't, you know, some of the, most of the events they were happy with, some they were not, which is an eighth place still in the top 10, like you had mentioned. But consistency is the name of the game for this team. Invictus has won at the CrossFit Games before. It was 1 a.m. No, 1, one, one before May. 2014 was when Invictus won the Affiliate Cup, and then the next year, Rich Froning entered the chat. But it would be an interesting return to Invictus's dominance if the year after Froning retired from competition, the San Diego Affiliate made their way back to the top spot. Everyone got a lot more excited, didn't they? And you think about consistency across the tests, if you are consistently going to go top 10, in every one of the tests here, a number of them between 10 and 20 tests at the CrossFit Games each year. Consistently going in that top 10 position, you are going to progress well. You're probably going to be podium. If you've got no outliers, your results are going to show that exactly what Oslo Navy Blue have done. Invictus are just absolutely destroying this. Jeremy, that's the name of the game. You look at the individual competition, Justin Medeiros, fittest man on earth the last two years with one individual test win. Invictus out front, moving to Big Bob with that worm. 15 worm clean and jerks completed. And this is the second segmented Big Bob push. It's another 42 feet. And then Invictus will head back to the ring muscle ups for their third round of 10 synchronized movements. Move fast, lift heavy is in third right now. East Nashville proven just to the right of Invictus is in second. And speaking with Andrea Nistler, she said that they're very much excited for this classic CrossFit to come up in the programming, and this is very much so it. This is a gymnastics pull, an odd object lift, and a push. So this is gonna be right in their wheelhouse. It's not a walk, it's not a run. It's just kind of a urgent jog. Not wasting time, but also catching your breath. Back to the Zeus rig. We're talking here in tortoise type scenario here. Rings moving about a little bit. Wind still blowing a fair bit, cooling things down on the competition floor, but making things difficult once the athletes do get to the rings. And going back to our recipe for success, did you manage your muscle ups in their earlier sets to be able to finish strong on this last set of 10? Invictus is staring down the barrel of another test win. They would have to put forward their slowest round by far to not catch Omnia's 1435 and by a lot. Straps for the rings, an important factor as well. The shorter the rings, Jamie, the easier it is. So these long straps, a lot more controlled with your midline stabilization once you do get on top. Absolutely. You're going to think about with these long straps, they're going to move, right? A lot more movement with your body. Once you do get to the top, you want to make sure that you are kipping out of that dip as well to help assist you to the very top, especially if you have to wait there for your teammates. Big break, though, here for Invictus. It looks to be planned the way that they're communicating with one another. Devin Kim just had a long look to Brittany Weiss. They nodded before remounting the rings. No 
Oslo Navy Blue. Center of your screen here in second place overall. East Nashville has jumped in front of Invictus. And these are valuable points. Proven's got to go. They have to do work to catch Invictus. And beating them by one position will help. It won't take a huge bite out of the deficit. But they need all the help they can get to try to climb up the leaderboard with Tess evaporating. And this is where that push the pace comes into play. Who can make it hurt? Who wants to go through that grunt work and grind through these last set of worm clean and jerks, especially on that bob push? And who saved enough in the tank to finish strong? Oh, Jeremy Proven can make it hurt. <laughs> oh, God, I what? We can do it, Tim Paulson. I mean, the cycle rate is pretty incredible here for East Nashville on the left side. You can see Invictus and the white and red leaders jerseys on the right. Well, the problem is you go out too hot, you're relying on everything to fall into place and your fitness to fall into place to finish strong. But if you leave something in the tank, you can pace it really well and speed up for that last round. And especially if you do, we want, that is the, the name of the game, but also the physical part of this, but the mental aspect of this is very important because you know your body is hurting. But if you can will yourself to pick up one more rep and keep on moving, that's going to make a huge difference. About a minute and a half until the time to beat. One more 42-foot Bob Push segment after these 15 worm clean and jerks. Great dichotomy here between the Proven crew and Invictus. Second year together for Invictus. Proven while extremely veteran. They're a new team together, and they don't live in the same place. So this is really the first team test, so to speak, where everyone is moving one implement together. Nistler, Paulson, Williamson, Baracchino, they have moved as a unit. Now can they move oh, the bomb man. faster than Invictus? Dig deep and drive. Invictus is unrelenting. They saw the challenge and rose. How do you win the CrossFit Games? You do it just like that. Invictus will remain your leader heading into the Coliseum. Oh, come and get us. You want to challenge, there it is. You see your, your opposition, their opposing team right next to you. Who can grind that out? And Invictus was able to do that. Talking about grizzly bears earlier, Joel. Poke the bear with Invictus. They come home strong. What a last push. I'd love to get the split time on that last segment, but that was quick. Thirteen forty-nine, almost a full minute better than Omnia in heat number two. Oslo Navy Blue. Second place overall, working their bomb to the finish. There's no uh, ground to be gained, though. The only team they're chasing is already done. So Navy Blue will be looking up the standings as we head into our next test. And you see what this is doing to these team members. They are crossing that line and just absolutely falling to the ground because their legs are smoked from that push. If you think about team versus individual, Jamie, and you've experienced both. With a team, you've got your worm cleaner jerks and this bob push to get through. You sort of rally a little bit more mentally and physically when you've got three team members you don't want to let down. Oh, that's the biggest part about team. The beautiful part about the team is you don't want to let your teammates down. You want to make sure that you are doing everything you can to not let each other. That's the worst thing that could actually happen. And I'm sorry to my teammates for all the times I did. <laughs> They make a switch here. I think that's the first time we've seen a rearrangement on the bottom. And CrossFit that, Walleye, who Jamie, we highlighted at the top, they have struggled here. They're going to be able to finish. We have plenty of time until the gap, almost two full minutes. 
The beauty of the team is that you pick each other up and you can play into each other's strengths and weaknesses. You know that everyone is going to be a little bit different, but you pick each other up no matter what. OBA is still out there. So too is Preston Da. Invictus, right now with your win. Proven second, no shortcuts third. Omnia, it's time from the last heat, holds up for fourth. Prestanda moving after those final 15 worm clean and jerks. And Alex Alebro at the front of the pack with Victor Langsford moving this sled. It does seem like the last push has been significantly easier for everybody. Oh, the finish line is inside, Joel. Like you're exhausted, you've got nothing left, and yet it still moves. They've got those big fans at the end of North Parks putting cold water on you. Yes. Athletes haven't moved from there either. There goes Prestanda. Sixth place qualifiers at the European semi final. And OBA is the only team still out there with 30 seconds left to go. This is one of those things you've all experienced if you've done CrossFit in your affiliate. You've got 20 seconds left and one thing to do. Can you get it done before class is over? Oh, come on. <laughs> 15 seconds for OBA. Kelsey Keel and Joey Tortora driving up top. You've got to get across the entirety of the blue segment. And OBA falls just short. Time counts. They're impressing me test after test after test, learning some lessons from last year. They have been outstanding. <laughs> Invictus continues, though, to stand on top of the leaderboard. You can't fall out of first if you're in first. 13.49, <laughs> a full six seconds. They just reached into the chest cavity of the team from Proven, grabbed their heart, and turned it to stone. We know this is going to be a hot and fast start. Invictus getting out to a great lead, battling with Proven, the first components of this. Communication, synchronization. Team that has come back as a four from last year. Falling into second place, Proven in a hurry. They want more points on the leaderboard. But once they got hold of the bob, Invictus dominance. Powering forward. The leaders' jerseys will stay on. And another great finish from Invictus. Down to Lauren Smith. She is with Invictus. I am indeed, Joel. Josh, when you're going to the final Bob push and you've got proven seconds away from you, how are you communicating to get that across the line, especially at the speed that you did? I think I just heard him shout go multiple times and that was it. Whatever he says, I do. <laughs> this is a team that are returning to the games. You obviously know each other really well. How, Jorge, is that playing out this year? Um, I mean, obviously really well. Uh, we just kind of listen to each other. Um, like last night, we knew today was really important to come out hot on the first one. We did, we proved that we belong here um, and that's what we're gonna do the rest of the way. How much are you guys feeling pushed by the teams around you? There's some really good teams here, um, which makes it even more fun. So, um, yeah, really exciting. Third last year, I'm going to allow you to lay down that gauntlet. Give us the battle cry. Is there only one goal for this year? I mean, yeah, to win. <laughs> but I mean, in all honesty, to walk away happy with everything that we laid out in our like performances during the weekend. I think that's the only thing we can ask for. Be proud of that. The white jerseys look good on you guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We're not giving them up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, over the last couple of years, this has been a team competition dominated by one team. CrossFit Mayhem Freedom won 60% of the tests over the last two seasons. A vacuum has been created, and Invictus walked right into it. Games.crossfit.com has the full leaderboard, statistics, schedule, everything you need to know. 
team competition's done for a couple hours, but the individuals, plenty of work to do. Stick around, CrossFit Games moving day rolls on here in Madison, Wisconsin. The 2023 Noble CrossFit Games are presented by Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. Rogue, don't weaken. Jocko Go and Jocko Molt, the official energy drink and the official ready to drink protein shake of the Noble CrossFit Games. Wild Health, winning is in your DNA. Unleash it with Wild Health. And Momentus, the official supplements and sports nutrition partner of CrossFit.
That's it, Carolyn. Don't forget to use your legs. Three more. Left. They say that CrossFit is not for everyone, but it's for anyone. The thing is, Six, people four, make an incorrect assumption that it's Seven. not for them based on self-limiting beliefs, based on things that they assume from social media or society, and that is what's absolutely not the case. You just have to find the right CrossFit that matches with your values and, and feels like a good place to be, and you know, you'll find your tribe and your community of people. these athletes are working against their peers at the CrossFit Games, they know that they're also testing or working out against or doing an event next to the fittest in the world. The CrossFit Games are the greatest, biggest stage of fitness where we find the best, most well-rounded athletes on the planet. The cool thing about the CrossFit Games is that you never know exactly what the test is going to be. So we literally test things from long to short to medium, uh, from heavy to light to no weight to odd object to traditional objects to things you may have prepared for or things you may not have prepared for. And that's literally what it is. It's a test of all of your years worth of work. I think it exposes a lot of people and, and the fittest are prepared for every element they're exposed to and the games test that. It's also a festival. It's also a great time to come and see other people engaging in a lifestyle that is supporting, embracing challenge. It's a showcase for what CrossFit does. 15 years ago, you had people that were strong or people that were fast or people that could swim. You had people that were good at the things they did, O courses, whatever they were good at and they showed up in the environment and you could very quickly see like, oh yeah, that's what that person's good at, but they can't do all this other stuff. And so then the world for 15 years has been doing CrossFit, it's constantly very functional, it's executed at high intensity, this thing that's just so amazing and so beautiful, but also so simple. Everybody in the room is interested in everybody else getting better. Everybody in the room is interested in, hey, it's challenging, but that's a good thing. And that's the, that's the philosophy that the community embraces. Hey, challenge is worth pursuing. Hey, it's gonna make you better. Hey, I don't know if I can do it, but it's worth giving it a shot. Uh, and that's the CrossFit Games.
We are past the halfway point of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games as Saturday rolls on here at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin, as people are filing in to the Coliseum to take in test number eight. I'm Sean Woodland with the second fittest woman in the 35 to 39 year old division, Stacey Tobar. Nikki Brazier's down on the competition floor. It's time to work fast and recover faster. Two intervals for total time. Two rounds of 21 box jump overs, 20 inch on the box, 15 calorie row, nine burpee box jump overs, 36 inch box. Rest at the six minute mark, you go again. Two rounds of nine burpee box jump overs, this time 36 inches first, 15 cal row, 21 box jump overs, 21. 20 inch box. Recipe for success delivered by Trifecta. What will you be watching for here in this test, Stacey? More speed is more rest. However, you cannot redline on the way out. <laughs> 10 women in this first of three heats. Kelly Baker is in lane four, and she wasn't even supposed to be here today. And for more on that, here's Nikki Brazier. That's right, Sean. It is a real Cinderella story for Kelly Baker. She came in below that cut line, but ended up moving up into a spot today because of a withdrawal. In the run this morning, she took eighth place. That moved her up seven spots into 23rd. Now she's only 11 points behind today's cut line, and she should do pretty well in the Olympic lifting event later on this afternoon. Let's see how she does with these intervals. There is Kelly Baker, who had her stuff packed up last night, had to unpack and get ready for at least one more day of competition. So 21 box jump overs at 20 and 24 inches to start us out. There are 180 total scored repetitions in this test. You're seeing two different techniques here, Sean. Some are jumping over the box and just kind of pivoting off, and others are jumping on top of the box and stepping down. We'll see which one ultimately favors and saves their legs in the long run. And all the athletes are on to the rower. You can level up your performance and get 20% off standard or elite membership at wildhealth.com. Use the code CFGAMES. The rowers are set to a damper of five and the foot pads at a setting of three. So the athletes really don't have a choice if you're a shorter athlete with a smaller foot and you prefer a lower setting on the pad, you might be out of luck. You might just have to take what you get here. The damper, however, is set at a five. I think that's favorable for all athletes. However, if you are a longer, taller, stronger athlete, you might want some more output and a higher damper. You Sydney Wells is going to be the first woman off of the rower and onto those burpee box jump overs, 36 inches on that box. So their hands can touch the box. They just cannot swing their feet out and around. This is just a game of getting up off the floor, although you don't want to, and getting up and over the box. You want time to rest here. To but Shelby you got to move. In the middle of your screen, Neil in 22nd place overall. We cut to 20 athletes after tonight. We only have two tests remaining, including this one, until we make that cut. City Wells is now done with her nine burpee box jump overs. She has moved on along with Shelby Neal to the 21 box jump overs. And Sydney Wells was right on that cusp line last night. She's currently sitting in 24th. We cut to the top 20 after tonight, so she knows where she needs to push the pace here. She has to stay above Shelby Neal there. Caroline Stanley, Amanda Barnhart, all on the look to the outside in in order to make the cut tonight. Just saw Caroline Stanley and Amanda Barnhart. Barnhart right now, 28th place overall. She's got a lot of ground to make up as Sydney Wells and Shelby Neal are both to the rower now. Bailey Rail is out there as well. She's on the rower and Caroline Stanley. And Rebecca Vittison 
has gotten herself situated on the C2 and Abigail Domit. Alexia Williams and Christine Kohlenbrander are the only two women still working on their final set of 21 box jump overs. And now 15 calories on the rower at the 81 rep mark. They'll be done and then nine final burpee box jump overs and then they will rest for the remainder of the six minutes. Your total time in the two intervals is your score. Shelby Neal there. And Sydney Wells battling it out on the row. Just knowing that there's only nine burpee box jump overs in sight is a breath of fresh air. So it's just transitioning out of that rower and getting right to work, knowing you have a little bit of rest there. And Shelby Neal and Sydney Wells are even. Here comes Carolyn Stanley in third place in this first of three heats. 90 total reps is what they need to complete here. Now, Kelly Baker moving to the box jump overs as well. Wells and Neal each with five reps remaining now. Now, in the event that an athlete gets capped in this first interval, they will have to complete all the work before they can start their second one. So now Shelby Neal is in. And Sydney Wells is there. So 420.41 seconds for Shelby Neal. Marilyn Stanley is in at 427. And there's Rebecca Vinnison. There's Christine Kohlenbrander. She and Alexia Williams are the last two women out on the floor as they will now try to recover. At the six minute mark, we will start again. As an athlete, you're just thinking about big breaths in through the nose and forceful exhales out. You're trying to think about whether or not the strategy that you approach this first part worked or not and how you may adjust. Quick replay here. It was Shelby Neal down there in lane six and Sydney Wells right next to her in seven almost rep for rep here off the rower at the exact same time they use the exact same approach on the burpee box jump overs just get up off the floor get over the box as quickly as possible in the end though Shelby Neal snuck out taking the lead on this first part Sydney Wells after the run this morning to take a look at the top five times from that first interval. Moved herself up to 24th place overall. She was the last woman in in 30th place. Still has to make up some ground to survive the second cut. These athletes train interval work, Sean. They train back-to-back -back scenarios like this. Work, rest, one-to-one. -one. Maybe every three minutes you're going again. There's, they're trained for this. They're ready for this. So there's a little bit of a scoring problem here. So they're going to reset the clock. So now these women are actually getting some extra rest. So one of the athletes may have tripped the timer inadvertently. So everyone on the floor right now needs to thank that athlete for buying them some extra rest. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Amen. Okay, now it'll be interesting to see who can actually stay consistent. Will we see Shelby and Sydney battling it out there in the end? Caroline Stanley, I'm a farm girl at heart, so I'm going to give my farm girl some love. She just loves that grunt work, man. She rides horses. She wrangles the cattle. She likes to ride the four-wheeler. Hey, that's my kind of girl, a little southern love right there. She knows how to work, is what I'm saying. She's just going to work until she gets the job done. So we'll see if she can uh, keep the pace and push the pace here a little bit, as it looks like so far, so good. Well, Kelly Baker was one of the first women to get to the rower on the way back. And now 15 calories to complete. And believe it or not, this is where they might be resting. Um, however, they still have to push the pace, but they can at least catch a little bit of a breath here, really rely on a strong leg drive and a hard finish at the chest there with the handle and recover in. And there is Kelly Baker, who moved up to 23rd place. 
after the 5K run. I mean, what a story, Sean. She gets a text message or an email at 11 o'clock last night saying, hey, unfortunately, one of your athletes withdrew due to an injury. We're taking the top 30. Are you ready to go? Of course she's ready to go. Well, Shelby Neal has taken the lead now here in the second interval. She's in the middle of the floor in lane number six. 21 box jump overs now. And you see Shelby Neal kind of jumping into the back of the box, allowing her to have a quick little pivot and a short little step off the box. Rather than staying tall, you'll see Sydney next door there in lane, uh, lane seven. She's staying a little bit more upright, which is less taxing on the legs. However, it is a little bit slower pace there. And Kelly Baker now is back in front along with Shelby Neal. These are your top two in this second interval. Rebecca Vinison is now moving up along with Bailey Rail in the blue on the left side of your screen. Now Sydney Wells making her way to the Burby Box Jump Overs. Nine reps they have to complete here. We add the total of the two times in these two intervals for the final score. And after this, it's 15 calories on the rower. And you can see Shelby there crawling over the box, whereas Kelly got off first. She was just hopping over. The top three right now in this interval, Kelly Baker, Shelby Neal, and Bailey Rail. Rebecca Vittison and Abigail Doman are into the rower. And now here comes Amanda Barnhart. I don't want to say it, but there's a potential there that Shelby may be losing a little bit of gas. Her power output doesn't look quite as strong as Baker's there uh, looks on the rower. And that's just the compounding effect of that. Getting out of the gates hot, but you know, having more in the reserve when it counts in times like these towards the end of this workout. Hopefully she can make a little bit up on that burpee bo on the box jump over there at the end. Kelly Baker through 66 now, the 90 total reps here in this second interval. Her opening time is 421.02 seconds. She was a little more than a second behind Shelby Neal, who Baker's had the top time in the interval first. one. And here we go. You can see Shelby turning and facing the box. Kelly's kind of pivoting a lateral box jump over there. A little bit faster on the transition, a little bit quicker with each and every step and hop. 21 reps here, then it's across the finish line. And Kelly Baker got to this portion of the test a little bit ahead of Shelby Neal. And Neal had about a one second cushion on her after the first interval. And it's going to be Kelly Baker who gets across. And that looks like she will make up that deficit to Shelby Neal. And we'll have to wait for the total time here, though, as now Rebecca Vinnison is in and Bailey Rail. Abigail Doman is in. But Kelly Baker at 420.88 seconds should have the top time. Around 845 total as Sydney Wells is across. That's unofficial for Kelly Baker. And now Carolyn Stanley is done, and that leaves Alexia Williams as the last woman on the floor, and then she will come in. Now we will wait the total times to find out who has the top time, but we do believe it is Kelly Baker who will be around 8.45 unofficially. So Kelly Baker was Supposed to be a spectator at this point. Now she's set the top time with two heats remaining, and she is with Nikki Brazier. Kelly, last night you were cut, yeah. and now because of an athlete withdrawal, you are back in the competition and charging up the leaderboard. What does it mean to you to be back in the game today? <laughs> yeah, um, at semifinals, the ball bounced in my court at the very end, and I was at peace with it yesterday. Like. That's sport, but 
I don't know, God's great and I got a second opportunity, so I'm gonna give it my all. What are you telling yourself going into the final test of today? Uh, I had a burger and a beer last night and I, if that says anything, I think that's gonna give me a little bit more weight on, on the barbell, so we'll see. Congratulations, thank you so much. Thanks guys. Well, the burger and the beer is apparently working out for Kelly Baker at this point as she now has our top time. We're awaiting on the official score for her. One heat down, two heats remain here in test eight for the women at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Test number eight continues here for the women at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games as we are back inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Stacey Tovar and the Sticky Brazier down on the competition floor. <laughs> Test number eight, it's all about how hard you can work and then how fast you can recover. Two intervals for total time. Two rounds of 21 box jump overs, 20 inches on the box, 15 calorie row. Nine burpee box jump overs at 36 inches. You rest until six minute mark. Then two rounds of nine burpee box jump overs, 15 cal row and 21 box jump overs. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. More speed is more rest. However, you don't want a red line on the way out. Late assignments here for the second of three heats. And in lane number one is Sayer Kaya out of Turkey, who is having a heck of a competition and is in the running for the best ever finish for a woman out of Asia. 36 seed coming out of semifinals has actually improved as the Noble CrossFit Games have been going on. 20th in the ride, 32nd in the pig chipper, 26th inverted mentally, 31 in the alpaca redo, 14 ski bag, 9. Helena and ninth in the 5K. Top 10 finishes right there back to back. And you saw Olivia Kerstetter, who right now would be the last woman to survive the final cut. 20th place overall for Kerstetter right side of your screen as the athletes work through their 21 box jump overs. Karin Freova and Elisa Fuliano, along with Annie Thoris' daughter and Paige Powers, head to the rower. Paige Semenz is there, as is Kerr Setter. Now Fuliano getting to work. And you see none of these athletes are tightening that strap, Sean. They're scooting right in and getting right to work. The damper setting is set to a five, and the foot pad is set to a three. So if you're a shorter athlete, there's no time to mess with the pad. It is what it is. You're just gonna be given what you've got, but a longer, stronger, taller athlete may want to quickly adjust the damper if they have the effort to do so. Emma Tall and Elisa Fuliano are on the left side of the screen. Tall in the black top is your leader along with Annie Thorstadter who's gonna get to those nine burpee box jump overs. Along with Karin Freova. Annie, one of the taller athletes in the field. I'll make that Emma Tall, pardon me, in the blue. 36 inch box jump, uh, box, uh, burpee box jump over, no problem for her. Annie Thoris' daughter coming in in 12th place overall. 403 total points. She's only 
Two points back of Danielle Brandon for 11th, and then Annie Thorsauter now is on to her second and final set of box jump overs. 21 reps here. Now you'll notice Annie in lane six there staying nice and upright. Danielle Brandon right behind her. Emma Tall also doing the same. Annie Thoris out through 60 of the 90 reps here in this first interval. The 66 rep mark. She'll head back to the rower. And now Annie Thoris out of leading heat number two here. Still waiting on an official time for Kelly Baker out of heat number one, but we believe the total time for her was around 8.45. And I believe Sean Heat won when they got through these first two rounds. Had a little more than 90 seconds to rest. Four minutes 20 seconds from Shelby Neal was the top time in the first interval. And Annie there with just five more calories to go. She had no problem getting up and over the nine burpee box jump over 36 inch box. I expect her to. Uh, potentially take this first part here. And Thor's daughter is done. Three minutes and 22 seconds have now gone by. Now here comes Emma Carey, who's moved into second place behind Thor's daughter. Now Emma Tall and Karin Freova. Top of your screen. Tall in the blue, Freova in the black. Emma Carey there in lane eight, kind of walking over on her knees. Annie in lane six, staying on her feet. A little bit faster transition over the box. And Annie Thor's daughter is in, and she'll come in at about 357. 358.38 seconds for Thor's daughter. And Emma Carey snuck in second. Emma Tall, third. Less than two minutes to go before we hit the six-minute cap. Tall Powers and Freyova are all in. Now Daniel Brandon is across. Sayer Kaya and Lisa Fuliano are the only two women left on the floor. Kaya's on her final rep. Sayer Kaya coming all the way from the Asia semifinal. 36 seed out of there. Trains out of Oslo, so many games athletes train out of there. Coached by CrossFit Games vet Kristen Holte. Kaya gets in at 444, and Fuliano is in at 448. But Annie Thorstadt right now, the top time we've seen in interval number one, 358.38 seconds. Emma Carey is right behind her, four seconds back, followed by Tall Powers and Freova. I send it down to Nikki Brazier sure. on the floor. Remember, this is going to be a sprint once we give them the cue to go. Guys, I am seeing a lot of these athletes looking left, looking right, especially when they are on those rowers, trying to get a feel of where their competitors are against them in these intervals. They oftentimes talk to us about really running their own race, putting blinders on, not paying attention to what the women on their left and right are doing. But when there is no room for error, when there is no time to take your foot off the gas, a lot of these athletes seem to be adjusting on the fly. One minute. And Annie taking a quick big breath in, nice sip of water, choosing to stay on her feet rather than some athletes you saw sitting. Here in your mind, you're just kind of thinking, gosh, should I come out with the right strategy? What was everyone to the right and the left doing? Or am I going to stay in my lane and just roll with what worked those first two rounds? So in order to make things even from heat number one, they have added some rest for the athletes here. Because in heat number one, there was a bit of a timing snafu. A, a chip got tripped accidentally. They had to reset some things. So a little additional rest has been added here in heat two to keep things equal across this test. Remember, we are cutting down to 20 athletes here, and Sarah Kaya is on the right side of that line right now, but needs to do some work over these final two tests to keep herself safe. Annie Thorstadter had your top time 
out of interval number one at 358.38 seconds. And now we go through this test in reverse order, starting with the nine burpee box jump overs. And middle of your screen there, the leader of the first two rounds, Annie Ford's daughter. Emma Carey, who was among the first women to get back to the rower, Thor's daughter was right behind her, so much closer here at the start of this second interval than it was at the end of the first. Elisa Puliano on the left side of your screen. Which is interesting, because Puliano there on the left side of your screen was actually one of the last athletes to finish the first two rounds. And Emma Carey there on your right side, lane eight, was one of the second to finish. We'll see who recovers the fastest. Fifteen calories here, the 24 rep mark. They will move on to these 20 box jump overs, and it's Emma Carey, Annie Thoris, daughter, and Emma Tall, your top three. Two different techniques being used here. You see the squattier jump versus the taller step over by Annie. So Emma squatting, Annie, lane six, staying nice and tall. Paige Powers there in lane seven, middle of your screen in the army green shorts and blue shoes. Going through her 21 box jump overs as well. So at the 45 rep mark, it's back to the nine burpee box jump overs at 36 inches. And there goes Emma Carey in the lead here on the second interval. She had about a four second deficit on Annie Thorstadter at interval number one. And now Emma Tall has moved into second in the all blue towards the top. Annie Thorstadter in the middle of your screen. And here come Freova and Danielle Brandon. Now Semenza and Kersetter moving up. Emma Tall's in. 13th place overall, so very much on the right side of that cut line, trying to get herself into the top 10 and possibly into the final heat. Emma Carey is your leader as she goes back to the rower now for 15 more calories. Wow, she made up some ground. Being a shorter athlete at a, against a 36-inch box, she made up some ground there. Just got down off the floor and up and over the box as quickly as she could. Well, she has more than erased that four-second deficit on Annie Thorstadter as now Emma Tall, Danielle Brandon, and Annie Thorstadter join Carey at the rower. Here come Paige Semenza and now Kanye Freova. Paige Powers and Olivia Kerstetter, along with Sarah Kaya getting into the rower. Kaya towards the far end of the floor in the all-blue. Now every woman on her final 15-calorie row. And Emma Carey there with the noble sweatbands on her wrist gets off first. The 21 box jump overs here for Emma Carey. She was second in interval one with a time of 402.46 seconds. Emma Tall is now second. Now here come Brandon and Thoris daughter at the same time. But Danielle Brandon was about 18 seconds back at Thoris daughter in the first interval. So Thoris daughter has a bit of a cushion to work with here when it comes to her battle with Danielle Brandon. Emma Carey's done and she is in. And Emma Carey in four, well, 359.21 seconds. So Emma Carey is gonna have the new top time going into the final heat. Emma Tall is across. And just what we expected, Sean, director of the CrossFit Games, Adrian Bosman, said he wanted to see sub four. He got it. And Daniel Brandon is in. And remember, Daniel Brandon had to make up 18 seconds on Annie Thor's daughter to beat her in this test. Now Thor's daughter is in. And now Freyova is in as well. So Brandon picked up 10 on Thor's daughter. So Thor's daughter will have a better total time than Danielle Brandon as Kerstetter and Powers are across along with Sarah Kaya. So Elisa Fuliano is the last woman out on the floor. Emma Carey. We'll have the top time 
going into the she, final heat. Emma Carey improved the further along she got into this workout. Her first two rounds were a little over four minutes. Her final two rounds, under four minutes. So impressive. She just got right to work and didn't stop. Saw the finish line in sight and nailed it. Well, unofficially 8.01 the total time for Emma Carey. One heat remains here in test eight for the women on day number three of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. We are set for the final heat of the eighth test for the women here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. I'm Sean Woodland with Stacey Tovar. Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. Thanks for being with us, everybody. And this one's all about working fast and recovering. And so far, it's Emma Lawson who sits atop the overall standings with 553 points, but she's only seven points clear of Alexis Raptus. Ariel Lowen is within striking distance, as are Laura Horbath and Alex Gazan. Test number eight is intervals. Two intervals for total time. Down and back they go. 21, Baksham Bovers. 15, Kel Rowe. Nine, Burpee Baksham Bovers. Rest at the six minute mark, they go again. Back down the floor. Two rounds of nine burpee box jump overs, Cal Rowe and box jump overs. Recipe for success delivered by Trifecta. What do you got to do to smash this test? More speed gives you more time to rest. However, you don't want a red line on the way out, Sean. Let's send it down to Nikki Brazier on the floor. Now, guys, we are no stranger to two-part tests here at the CrossFit Games, but in the past when we've seen them, each part has been worth 100 points in and of itself. And this test, both scores from down and back, the two intervals will be added together to complete one final score worth 100 points. So in the past, we've seen athletes game the system, maybe come out hot, try to score 100 points from themselves while mitigating the back half. But here, there's no room for error. Both parts count just as much. Ten women here in this third and final heat. And your overall leader, Emma Lawson, will be in lane number five. Emma showing us she can run long and short. Seventh in the 5K, fifth in Helena, first in the ride. And Emily Rolfe coming off a test win in the 5K earlier this morning. Right now, seventh place overall. We are underway. We start with the 21 box jump overs. Unofficially, the time to beat belongs to Emma Carey. Around eight minutes, one second total for both intervals. Ninety total repetitions in each interval. With Laura Horvath, left side of your screen in the all blue. She's won the leader's jersey along with Alexis Raptus in lane six. Now it's Lawson and Raptus to the rower at the same time. Here comes Laura Horvath as well. So now 15 calories to complete here. Transition matters, Sean. Those tiny little seconds accumulate at the end of this thing. And so getting in and out of the rower, getting to the boxes, 
as quickly as possible will make a difference in the end. There's Gabby Magawa, who is making up ground on Emma Lawson. Lawson, your leader right now at the 36 rep mark is when Lawson will be able to get up from that rower and move on to the nine burpee box jump overs at 36 inches, and she is done. So Emma Lawson putting on a good pace here. Catherine Davis' daughter and Gabby Magawa opposite ends of the floor, right behind her. Davis are at the very bottom of your screen in the all black. Magawa at the very top in lane one. Here we see lots of different techniques taking place. They're getting off the floor quickly, but some are staying on their feet, some are sliding on their knees. Catherine Davids are coming in in 10th place overall right now. Emma Lawson is your overall leader. At the 45 rep mark, she will be done. And now on to 21 more box up over to Lawson. And now Ariel, Ariel Lowen moving into second with Gabby Magawa, Laura Horvath, and Catherine Davids' daughter. Eight oh one point six seven seconds officially for Emma Carey is the top combined time for these two intervals. And you see Katrin Davis daughter there in the all black making a move. Gabby McGowan on screen right now, ninth place overall, trying to hold off Katrin Davis daughter. She's only three points up on Davis daughter for that spot. As Emma Lawson is onto the rower for the final time in this interval, 15 calories that she needs to complete here. Ariel Lowen, Gabby McGowan, Laura Horvath, Jamie Simmons, and Katherine Davids are top three on the screen. On the left, it's Gabby McGowan. On the right, Ariel Lowen, and your overall leader, Emma Lawson. G-Shock is giving you the chance to win a new G-Shock watch, a CrossFit Level 1 seminar, and more than $400 in CrossFit swag. Terms and conditions apply. Emma Lawson is done, and now she's got nine burpee box jumps remaining. Uh, here comes Gabby McGowan in second place, Ariel Lowen in third, and Laura Horvath in fourth. Catherine Davis out and Jamie Simmons getting to the box at the same time as well. You see two different techniques being used here. Ariel Lowen in the blue tank top and green shorts sliding on her knees. And our leader there on the left side of your screen, red shorts, white sports bra, kind of staying on her feet, nice and light, up and over, just getting right back down to the floor. Final rep for Emma Lawson. And she is in. That will be the best time that we have seen out of any of these three heats. 353.67 seconds. And now Gabby McGawa is in. Ariel Lowen came across the finish line along with Jamie Simmons and Laura Horvath. Bethany Flores is in and now Alexis Raptus will be the last woman to finish. Now, you got to get set to do it all over again. As the athletes take a break, let's go back down to Nikki Brazier. We've seen a few different techniques when it comes to getting up and over that box, but Katrin David's daughter is the only athlete that I have seen do a full rotation coming up and over the box on each and every rep. Stacy, you've done this a few times in competition. How is she not getting dizzy? That's just the thing. I don't understand either. I would prefer a lateral box jump over myself, but once you're in a groove, you just kind of roll with it. Um, and maybe her world wasn't spinning after all. The man will be up next. And you're going to want to join us for heat number one. Five time for this man on earth, Matt Fraser, will be joining us for that. Getting set to start interval number two here in the third and final heat for the women in test number eight. And it's Emma Lawson, your overall leader, who had the fastest time at 353.67 seconds. Not only the fastest time in that heat, but the fastest time we have seen in any heat from interval number one. We'll take a look back at Emma Lawson on that first run down the floor, and she never trailed here. She led the pace the entire way. She 
with grace, actually. Just kind of hopped right off those feet, easily up and over the box. Power output on the row was exceptional. Looks recovered as she's standing here waiting to do the next two rounds. Emma Lawson, your overall leader. She has a test win in ride on Thursday morning, the very first test of these 2023 Noble Across the Games. Had the leader's jersey after that test, then relinquished it to Alexis Raptus and then regained it on day number two yesterday. Getting set to start the second and final Stay interval for the women here in heat number three, the third and final heat of test number eight. And it's Emma Lawson in the middle of your screen wearing the white overall leader's jersey who had the top time in the first interval at 353.67 seconds. We start with the nine burpee box jump overs, 36 inches on that box. They can get over it however they want. They just cannot swing their feet out and around. Gabby Magawa had the second best time. The only other woman to go sub four in interval number one at 359.43 seconds is Catherine David's daughter, the former two-time champion. Now at the bottom of your screen is into the rower for the first time for 15 calories. Keep an eye on the scoring hat on the top of your screen. The athletes name on the far left will be your heat leader and the number in the white box next to that athlete's name will indicate how many repetitions she has completed the number in the white box next to everyone else's name will indicate how many reps by which they trail the leader 90 total reps here in this second interval at the 24 mark is where emma lawson will be done and she once again leading the way on this second interval, 21 box jump overs here. That box is 20 inches high. Now here comes Ariel Lowen on the left side of your screen. She's maintained that three, four rep lead throughout. Staying nice and low, jumping to the back of the box. Emma Lawson, white sports bra, red shorts, pivoting. Looking relaxed. You'll see her again sprint to this next tall box, get right to work. Now the back half of the second and final interval for Emma Lawson. You can level up your forwards, get 20% off standard or elite memberships at wildhealth.com. Use the code CrossFit Games. So Emma Lawson, your overall leader by just seven points over Alexis Raptus. The winner of a test will get 100 points. The second place gets 96 and so on and so forth as you work your way down the results. So Lawson trying to get some more breathing room when it comes to the battle for the top spot in the overall standings. And Lawson is done. She'll be first in the rower. 15 more calories here. You'll see her start pulling even without her other foot there in the strap. She just gets right to work. 8.01.67 seconds. That's your top time from Emma Carey in the prior heat. And now Jamie Simmons and Catherine Davis are getting to the rower. Ariel Lowen is there. She's right next to Emma Lawson in the green shorts and black top. There is now Ariel Lowen on the left side of the screen. You can see Emma kind of getting back to the monitor. Her handle getting back to the monitor a little bit faster than Ariel Lowen. That means she's just taking a few more strokes per minute in the end. That may help her accumulate more calories faster. Emma Lawson onto the 21 box jumps. She's got to go up and over here 21 times and then across the finish line. She's extending her lead here, Sean. She was three, four reps ahead the first round. She's now eight reps ahead on this back half. Can we say she's getting faster? It certainly does look like an Ariel Lowen sits in second. It is Gabby McGowan on the left side of your screen in the all black in third. The Lawson is getting set to finish up here and she's looking to get her second test win of the CrossFit Games and she will do it in convincing fashion. Sub four in both intervals for your overall leader.
Now Ariel Lowen looks to be the next woman to finish. Lowen coming in in third place overall, looking to keep herself in one of those podium spots. And now Gabby Magawa is in. Alexis Raptus is across. That's big for her. Here comes Jamie Simmons and now Laura Horvath. Catherine Davis' daughter finished. Emily Rolfe is in as well. But there is Emma Lawson who looks to hang on to the leader's jersey. Heading into the final test of the day. That's test nine tonight. The Olympic total when the heavy barbells come out onto the floor. That should be a lot of fun. But this was a lot of fun for Emma Lawson. Led from the front the entire time. She sure did. She made up ground on these 21 burpee box jump overs. Her transition was so fast between each of these movements. She looked so light on her feet. She got right to work on these 36 inch boxes. Looked at her judge like, did I do it? I did. And finishes first. 100 points for Emma Lawson. It's been a good day for Canada today. So far, two women from Canada have won the two tests. Emily Rolf earlier today, and now Emma Lawson, and she is with Nikki Brazier. Emma, you were an early leader, and you managed to stay ahead through both of those intervals. What was your plan of attack for this test? Honestly, didn't have a plan. I just kind of went as hard as I could and hoped that I was able to keep up on the second interval. And uh, it worked out for me today, so I'm happy. Yeah. You came out here in this red and white leader's jersey. What kind of additional pressure does that put on you mentally? Um, I mean, of course, everyone's goal coming here is to wear the leader's jersey. So I'm just trying to do what I can. Um, yeah, whatever happens, happens. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Emma Lawson with her second test win of the competition and looks to tighten her grip on the top spot on the overall leaderboard. Women are done. Men coming up next. Five-time fittest man on earth, Matt Fraser, will join us here in the booth. Stay with us, everybody. Our coverage continues here in Madison, Wisconsin, as the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games roll on.
We are back inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin for test number eight. We are past the halfway point of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. The men getting set to take the floor here. I'm Sean Woodland with Adrian Conway. We've got Mike Arsenault down on the competition floor. We were told we would be joined by Matt Fraser, but he has been delayed, so hopefully he will show up here in a little bit. But the business at hand, test number eight is intervals. That's right, it's intervals. It's two rounds of this. 21 box jump overs at 24 inches for these men. 15 calorie on the row, nine burpee box jump overs. They're gonna have a reset at six minutes and then guess what? They're gonna repeat it coming back the opposite way. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. What will you be watching for? Well, you gotta earn your rest. So you wanna think more speed. The faster you finish, the more time you're gonna get to recover. And then the trick is don't redline, run the race, but you gotta stay just under your full threshold. 10 men on the floor for this first of three heats. In lane number seven is Ant Haynes. He currently sits in 24th place overall. He got a backfill invite from the Asia semifinal. And for more on him, here's Mike Arsenault. That's right, Sean. Ain't wasn't even supposed, or Ant wasn't even supposed to be here on July 19th. That's when he got the call that he received the backfill. He had already tapered his training. He got a flight to Madison. He was going to be here anyway because he was coaching a Masters athlete. He was supposed to leave on Thursday to go to a wedding in Scotland. Instead, this is his wedding gift to his friend Ali, potentially a top 10 performance here on test number eight. Nick Matthew is hoping to get himself some points here in this test right now 21st place overall again we cut down to 20 athletes after tonight and unfortunately they did not let nick cut down his shirt that could be the lack of his superpower here in the coliseum this year Chim. heat number one is underway and we start with the 21 box jump overs at 24 inches now for the men now we're going to see several different styles on this box jump over here. The one standard is that the athletes do have to stabilize on the ground, then jump again. There's no touch and go box jumps allowed. The 21 reps here, middle of your screen is Nick Matthew. Once again, 21st place overall, trying to work his way inside the top 20 over these final two tests before that cut tonight. James Sprague and Nick Matthew will be the first two men in the rower along with Fabian Benito. That's right, and James Brigg makes short work of those jump, box jump overs, staying very lateral the entire time. And I'll tell you what, Sean, even from what we saw previously from the women, it really pays off to row with a lot of power. We're the athletes that were able to make the most time up on this herb in each direction that seemed to favor uh, in the overall fastest time. There is Fabian Benito, who sits in 28th place overall with 239 points. He's got to make up some ground here over these final two tests to survive the final cut. Now Benito, bottom of your screen, moving on to the nine burpee box jump overs at 48 inches. This Can you get over however you want? You just can't fit, swing your feet out and around. That's right. There's going to be a lot of different forms here even to get over this box. We saw some of the females earlier just crawling over. We saw some bounding over. Everyone's going to be using their hands because this box, again, to remind you guys watching, it is 48 inches. And that is not something that easily these guys could just get up and over without the use of their upper body, especially not considering all the work they've done with their lower body up until this point throughout the weekend. Nine reps here, then it's back to the smaller box at 24 inches, the one that you see right there in the middle of your screen. On the right side is now Heinrich Hapalainen and Fabio Benito will be the first two men for those reps. Here come Nick Matthew and James Sprague towards the top of your screen. Elevate your athleticism. Get 20% off standard or elite membership at wildhealth.com. Use the code CFGAMES. 90 total reps here. We're looking at Nick Matthew to the left. And of course, James Sprague on the right here, again, remaining pretty laterally on his box jumps. He hits, lands softly, and immediately steps down the foot closest to the floor. No crossing over for James, and it's allowing him to make fast work at these reps. James Sprague in 23rd place overall with 291 total points. 
Sean, another thing that was a key contributor to success in the, in, the, in the female side as we watched him execute this test was transitions are a big aspect of this. You can't just be focused on the movement at hand. You've got to get to the next movement in order to progress yourself towards the finish line as fast as possible. Top four on your screen on the far right is your leader in this heat right now, Fabian Benito. Next to him is Heinrich Apollina. And then on the left side, the far left of the screen is James Bray. Currently sits in third place in this heat. And Nick Matthew is in fourth. Final 15 calorie row before the nine final burpee box jump overs at 48 inches to close out interval number one. Benito, the first one off to the burpee box jump overs. And one thing to watch here again, too, is their descend to the floor. You can't just think about getting over the box. You've got to get your hands literally down to the ground, make contact with your chest as quickly as you can in order to start the next rip. Fabian Benito looking to get across the finish line first here. His best finish in this competition came in the opening test in Ride when he finished 13th. Sean, I'd be curious too, in the athlete's mind here, are they thinking forward to that six minute mark already? How bad am I suffering? How do I gauge this fatigue that's building? Do I really want to win by a couple seconds right now? Or do I want to put it in reservation so I can finish strong on the back end? Well, Heinrich Kapalainen is the first man across at 359.02 seconds. But Ant Haynes also got in ahead of Fabian Bonito. We see Nick Matthew on a knee, a couple of the gentlemen also on a knee in the prone position. They're kneeling, they're trying to take in oxygen. There was a point in a lot of competitive history within sports where like, you were showing weakness if you bent over and put your hands on your knees. Sean, we started to understand that this is actually the position we can take in the most oxygen in that place. Every coach that ever yelled at me for that owes me an apology right now. <laughs> they owe you a big apology. So Heinrich Kapalain in 359.02 seconds, and Haynes edges out. Fabian Bonito by three tenths of a second, and it's Sprague and Parker rounding out the top five. Let's bring in Mike Arsenault. Just building on the, the rest uh, discussion there, guys. Adrian, question for you. So these athletes getting out over between 90 seconds and two minutes to rest before the second part of this test. Is there anything they can do other than just trying to get that heart rate back down to a more manageable level to attack the second part of this test at close to full capacity? There's, there's not really a lot that they can do, and, and that really is a great question, other than trying to find that prone position perhaps early in their recovery. What they want to do is then get to their feet, try to shake out the legs, move and process some of that lactate that is built in their lower bodies throughout the course of the last two and a half days, and then really try to get their mind focused on how they need to attack the back half of this test. There's a look at Jack Farlow. Trying to get his heart rate down. But it was Fabian Benito who led the way, but then Heinrich Appelainen, the man on the left side of your screen, was able to reel him in on those final nine burpee box jump overs. He was very consistent, Sean. He made headway in all the transitions, not slowing at all. And then Appelainen just creeping in right there to take it. So Appelainen was first, and Haynes was second in that interval by about two seconds. And now we go through this in reverse order. We start with the nine burpee box jump overs. And then after that, it's the 15 calorie row. And we're seeing urgency from all the athletes out the gate, of course. This is where they've only got the, 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 the short set, the short amount of work. This is the nine repetitions as they progress forward into the 15. It's about the next set of nine box burpee box jump overs that we're, where we're going to really start to see some separation into the final stretch. Well, Nick Matthew is off first. Followed by Heinrich Kapalainen and James Sprague. Now here come Loritz Fiebig and Ant Haynes. Nick Matthew towards the middle of your screen in the blue shorts, no shirt on, and the yellow shoes. Now on the right side in the box on your left, so top three men on your screen. Nick Matthew right in the middle. Heinrich Kapalainen on the right, James Sprague on the left. On this row here, right in the middle, this is where you kind of got to be willing to show a little bit of grit. Focus on the mechanics, driving with the legs as long as you can before you hand it off to the upper body so you can save a little bit of juice. Now Heinrich Hapalainen, first man to the 21 box jump overs, followed by Nick Matthew, then Fabio Benito, and Jack Farlow are next. Hapalainen using the low 
landing position on the box, not having to really rise and fall his center of mass. This is a great way and a great technique to really conserve some energy overall, especially when it comes to spiking your heart rate. You're staying low to the box, so it's a jump, but you're really not having to jump that high. And there's Nick Matthew, who right now is on the wrong side of the final cut line, but only 11 points back of Sam Quad. This is Matthew's second straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games. Last year he finished 14th overall and had a test win in the skill speed medley as Heinrich Kapalainen and Fabian Bonito are on to their second and final set of nine burpee box jump overs and James Sprague from the top of your screen and Nick Matthew are there as well. Jack Farlow closest to the screen. Working through his reps here. 90 total reps here, and it's Hapalainen who's through 51 and counting. Barlow, one of the strongest athletes in the field, Sean, really doing a great job this year, showing his well-roundedness, his, his focus to build that aerobic engine a bit. Well, Heinrich Hapalainen is the first man into the rower. You may have noticed Jack Farlow, his feet were swinging outside, but they were still above the plane of the box, so that was okay. He's not shortening the movement there. Apollinen on the left, Fabio Benito is on the right. And now Sprague, Matthew, Bronisaw, Olegowitz too. Keep an eye on him. He's in fifth place right now, but that man's got some power in his big run. Apollinen on the countdown looks like he's got a bit of a lead. Got to be willing to get a little ugly here on these rows, folks. I'm trying to think about getting that paddle right back to the monitor as fast as you can. Heinrich Hapalainen looking to go back to back here in these two intervals. His first time was 359.02 seconds. Here comes Fabian Bonito. James Sprague has moved himself into third place. And Jack Farlow now sits in fourth, followed by Bronislaw Legowitz. Eight reps remaining for Heinrich Hapalainen. And at this point, Sean, it just doesn't look like you can really close the gap. The fact that they're forced to step down and not rebound these jumps really dictates their ability to close the gap or pass people on this portion of the test. And it's going to be Heinrich Hapalainen who gets over. He had what he may have had a rep remaining or had to get up on the finish path. And now Fabian Benito is in. So we'll have to see what Hapalainen's official time is. It looks like it counted 402.96 seconds as James Sprague is in. Jack Farlow going to be the next man along with Bronislaw Alekowicz, so Alekowicz is now across, and so is Farlow. Nick Matthew also creeped in there. And David Shirunke, and now Feebig, Haynes, and Parker are all done. So we will wait for the total times, but it does look like Heinrich Hapalainen is going to have your top score here Woo! heading into heat number two. Great execution there by Henry. Very impressive. Only a three second difference between his first interval and his second. And that's the consistency that you hope for on a test like this, man. It's like not going out the gate too hot, running your race, but not redlining a lot like we said for the recipe for success. And that's what that's what Hapalinen did. He was very consistent throughout. He was able to sneak by here on this first half. Get himself just enough of a margin probably so he could have that advantage on the back half knowing that he's playing with a little bit of house money it's building a banker an advantage for yourself and then a lot of it can become psychological getting to that big box first knowing that you've got one or two reps ahead of the field and then he was able to finish and stumble his way across the finish line heinrich apple unofficially 801.98 seconds your top time with two heats remaining here in test eight for the men at the 2023 noble crossfit games
Action continues here for the men as we have two heats to go in test number eight here on day number three of competition for the individuals at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Sean Woodham with former Affiliate Cup champion Adrian Conway. We got Mike Arsenault down on the competition floor. Test number eight, work fast, recover faster. It's intervals. That's right, two intervals for time, Sean. It's two rounds of 21 box jump overs at 24 inches, 15 calorie row, and then nine burpee box jump overs at 48 inches. They're gonna get a couple minutes to rinse and repeat, and at the six minute mark, they're gonna turn around and repeat it all one more time. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. Anything changed for you after watching that first heat? Oh man, it's more the same. More speed is more rest. You've gotta know the pace that you can come out to allow yourself the time to recover before that six minutes, but also, you can't give too much too soon. You gotta stay under the red line throughout the execution of this test. 10 men on the competition floor here, and in lane 10, that's the guy with the target on its back. That's Sam Quant. He currently sits in 20th place overall. He would be the last man to survive the final cut here, and he has been slowly creeping his way up the overall leaderboard. He took a big dip after test number one, but has been inching his way up since test number four and currently sits in 20th place overall. He's only 11 points up on Nick Matthew, who we saw in that prior heat for 20th place. Sam's advantage right here is that he knows that time that he needs to beat to go get some points on Nick. And Nick Matthew's total time was 839.49 seconds. The top time belongs to Heinrich Capolina to 801.98. And this is where, again, we're going to see athletes have different forms of execution on these box jump overs, a slight pivot on each rep. Some will stay completely lateral to the box, but one thing we know for certain is there's no touch and go box jumps allowed. They've got to settle both feet on the floor before they go over to the next rep. Noah Olsen is just about done with his first set, and Olsen will be the first man along with Sam Cornwaye to the rower, and everybody else is close behind him. Now, Sam Quant right now is in last place in this heat. He'll be the last man to the row. He's at the bottom of your screen in the white shorts. Now we have 15 calories to complete on the rower. Sean, I gotta ask you a question. Does it surprise you that Noel Olson was the first one to the rower? No, no, <laughs> not at all. Uh, this man notoriously, folks, leads the way, leads the charge early in workouts, and we'll see what happens here. It being a shorter format with rest in the middle, this could play out well for Noah but we've got to make sure he doesn't come out too hot. He likes to toe and flirt with that red line. Yona Koski in the middle of your screen now. First man to the nine burpee box jump overs at 48 inches. Here comes Justin Medeiros, the former defending, I should say, two-time champion, but 15th place overall coming into this test. And people have asked me all weekend long, what's been the biggest surprise? It's been the man on the right side of your screen. Just has not looked like himself. Yeah, I I'll echo that. I've gotten to spend some time even in the back, and the overall attitude and demeanor of the, of the team back there is just kind of doing what they can to, to get by. And of course, early on, they knew they were gonna have some work to do to dig him out of the hole. Well, Yona Koski has almost reached the halfway point of this first interval, 90 total reps here. Now Koski moving ahead to his 21 box jump overs. And Koski looking smooth and composed. The one thing we know about Yona is that he's got an amazing engine. He has the ability to go. And in a test like this, where we're moving from one side of the floor to the other, it's literally like a race, a lot like on a bike or a lot like a 5K. He can dictate his pace, lead the way, and do just enough work to gather the points he's looking for. Colton Mertens, who's the fourth man from the top of your screen, he's in the, now in right in the middle. He's in fourth place. Colton is the shortest guy out there. And keeping pace here with the leaders after those nine burpee box jump overs. No yielding from C Colton Mertens ever. Well, Yonikoski continues to lead. He's into the rower for the second and final time on this opening interval. 15 more calories to complete here. And Dallin Pepper is the next man to the rower. Now, Sam Quad's made up a lot of ground. He's moved up into third along with Mertens and Medeiros towards the top of your screen. This is where that self-awareness has to kick in for these athletes, understanding that they do have to persevere into the latter part of this test. It's going to be a short turnaround, so how much do you push here is the question. Do you want to be first to the halfway mark, or do you want to be first on the way back overall? Yonikoski is now through 81 of the 90 scored repetitions, and he has moved on to his 
final nine burpee box jump overs, and here comes Dallin Pepper behind him. Pepper solidly in second place. Sam Quatt now has moved into third. He separated himself a little bit from Mertens and Medeiros. Now Medeiros is out, top of your screen in the dark shorts, and here comes Colton Mertens. Quant's making fast work of these burpee box jump overs here again. He does a great job at really getting his chest to the ground immediately. Feet make contact, chest to the deck immediately, allows him to begin that next rep. And Yonikowski is in, and he's going to beat Heinrich Hapalainen's top time from heat number one. But Dallin Pepper will be the next man in. Sam Quant, your leader on the floor, he has one final rep to go. There's Colt Mertens, who may have beaten, and I think he did, Sam Quant across the finish. Less than a second between the two of them, and Noah Olsen decided to leap his nameplate as he ran through the finish. And that leaves Sam Cornwaye as the last man to finish interval number one. We'll have a reset here. We'll start at six minutes. Remember your scores, your total times. Yona Koski at 348.16 seconds. The fastest time we've seen. Here's the close finish, Colton Mertens. Got across. For more on Colton Mertens, let's go down to Mike Arsenault. Well, after Colton won test number five yesterday in my interview with him, he mentioned that he was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder. Got some more context from him. Back in January, he was suffering from some vision pain and also some nerve issues. He was actually in hospital for five days and he was diagnosed with MOG antibody disease. And it's a disease that can cause inflammation and damage in the optic nerve, the spinal cord, and also your brain stem. So he's made some changes because it can be uh, caused by significant uh, stress and not getting enough rest and recovery. And Colton works by day on a farm, trains at night. So he significantly reduced his training volume to get better sleep. Good news is he hasn't had a flare up since January, but one could occur at any time if he doesn't keep his rest and sleep under control. So far, so good here at the 2023 CrossFit Games. And great to see Colton Mertens out here competing. He's a fan favorite. He currently sits in 13th place overall. The fans are seeing him up on the big screen, and that's what they are reacting to. Fan favorite, man. He's kind of like Mighty Mouse out there on the competition floor. How can you not root for it? It's the natural underdog. Here you are, your top five times from the opening interval. Yonikoski, 348 to lead the way there. Now we go on the way back. Second and final interval here for heat number two. Top time, total time, belongs to Hydro Capilina at 801.98 seconds. And although it's the same test going back the opposite direction, switching up the order significantly changes the way your body responds to this thing, Sean. Getting up and over this 48-inch box to begin with, it allows this part to happen much faster, but then the latter portion of the test gets that much nastier because we're actually progressing to end with the faster box jump overs, and that's, that's a lot nastier when you're, when you're a little bit more tired. Yoda Koski and Will Moore had the first two men done with those nine burpee box jump overs, and they are both onto the rower along with the rest of the heat for those first 15 calories. Now Sam Quant closest to the screen. That's right, notice the way he's taking in oxygen, that deep breath as he recovers and reaches towards the rower there every time. Currently, he would be the last man in in the final cut that's gonna be made after test number nine tonight, the Olympic total. They're looking to give himself some breathing room as far as the cut line is concerned. Well, Yona Koski is your leader, followed by Dallin Pepper and Quant. Most of these gentlemen using that same technique that we see from Koski here, almost clearing the box as they jump over it, getting that outside leg as close as possible so they transition right to the ground. There is Dallin Pepper right side of your screen trying to catch Sam Quant for second place here. Will Morad is next to him in the headband. Morad sits in fourth. There is Sam Quant. Sam Quant, the silent assassin. Quant is a guy who's finished inside the top five. The last two times he's competed at the CrossFit Games, he was fourth in 2022 and second in 2020. 
and you can almost see from the way he's moving through the reps, Yona continues to be smooth, but it's almost like Quan is literally building his intensity, and you can see it the way he's just throwing his body over the box. So at the 54 rep mark, Yonikowski will be done with those nine burpee boxer bovers, and he'll come right at you and get himself into the rower. 50 more calories for Koski, who won the opening test here at the 2023 Noble Cross of Games. It's the third time in his career he's won the very first test of the games. And you can see it there, Sean. It's 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 the universal pain face, right? It's kind of the, the, the grimace and bear it. You gotta drive through your legs, continue to pull through your upper body and just hope and pray that you're getting close to one calorie per stroke as much as you can so you can get off this thing as quickly as possible. Oh, it's a party on the rower. This is gonna be close. Transitions matter here. Yonikoti oh, is your leader. Now here come Pepper and Quant. The 21 reps here. And now Will Morad advancing to the box jump rowers. The four men on these final 21 reps. Now Justin Medeiros is still trying to get himself off the rower. The defending two-time fittest man on earth who currently sits in 15th place overall. And now Medeiros has gotten himself to the box. He's on the far left side of your screen. You can just see him moving in and out of view. Yonikoski is just about done here. He's got now two reps left. And Koski's done. Mm. So Yonikoski. Sub four each time. Dallin Pepper and Sam Quant came in just behind him. And now here's Will Morad. Well, Heinrich Hapalainen had the prior top time at 801.98 seconds. And I believe Noah, Justin, the top three in this heat may have beaten that. But we'll have to wait for the final scores as Medeiros gets himself across. He'll take sixth place in the heat. Uldis Utniks and Mertens is now in. That, le that leaves Sam Corwaye, the last man to finish here. Tough spot to be in, but not a better place to be in at Sean. The community always getting behind everybody, pushing them along to the finish line. Corway trying to gut through these final reps. So that'll be the final rep for Sam Corway. And he will come across the finish line. He's got to get his timing chip up there. He's got to get up on the. <laughs> The finish, Matt, for his time to count, and you heard the crowd reacting. And, and that right, that right there, surmises that experience for, for this test for that young man. He he was in a pain cave. They call it lizard brain when you get out there and you get too tired and you just <laughs> gotta get yourself across the finish line. But no one did it better as far as getting himself across the finish line is concerned than Yonikowski. Yonikowski put on a clinic for pacing and threshold work here. I guarantee he's doing a lot of intervals in his training. Um, he was very proficient in getting over the high burpee box jump overs. And then on the row, he was willing to dig and settle in to that discomfort. And you couldn't catch him by the time he got to the box jump overs. And that was it. Great execution there by Yonik. Well, two heats down, final heat coming up next here as our coverage continues of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games.
We are down to the third and final heat for the men in test number eight here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center, everybody, and we are glad you are with us. I'm Sean Woodland with former Affiliate Cup champion Adrian Conway, and we have Mike Arsenault, who is down on the competition floor. Your overall standings after test number seven, it's Roman Krenikov, who still has a sizable lead over Jeffrey Adler, but Adler was able to carve four points off of that in the last test, but still has a ton of work to do. Chandler Smith is hanging on to third, and it's Jay Crouch in fourth place, just two points up on Brent Fakowski. Test number eight is intervals. That's right, and it's two of them, Sean. They're gonna do two rounds of 21 box jump overs at 24 inches, 15 calories on the row, and nine burpee box jump overs, but this time on a 48 inch box. They're gonna rinse and repeat, and at the six minute mark, they're gonna head back the opposite direction one more time through. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. More speed is more rest here. The faster you complete the work, no matter what, everyone's starting at the six minute mark, so you wanna get there and get settled. But you can't run too fast. You don't wanna be at the top of your threshold at the red line, otherwise you're gonna be slower on the way back home. 10 men out on the competition floor for this third and final heat. And in lane number seven is Jay Crouch. Mentioned him, he comes in in fourth place overall. That's a bit of a surprise. Not many people saw that coming. And for more on him, here's Mike Arsenault. Well, thanks, Sean. This is Jay's best performance at the CrossFit Games thus far in his decade-long career. The reason, according to his team, that he's finally putting the hard work necessary to be commensurate, not just with his abilities, but with the difference of getting to the CrossFit Games and being competitive at the CrossFit Games. Jay attributed it, attributes it to an increase in maturity. We'll see if he can continue his march to the podium here in test number eight. And then Bailey Martin out of New Zealand, another Pleasant surprise here. Tenth overall after seven tests. He's a former teenage competitor at the CrossFit Games. He was here in 2017 when he finished 13th in the 16 to 17 year old division. Not bad to come out on your first appearance as an indie and be sitting in this situation. The third and final heat is underway. Yonakowski has the top time at seven minutes 45.38 seconds. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say these boys, they're all gunning for that time in this heat. And the thing that we're noticing already out the gate is these box jump overs are gonna play a role here. There's not a lot of work and passing that you can do here, but it's a great pace setter. None of these athletes are allowed to rebound this box jump over, so we're all seeing them step down. Some turning and pivoting and some staying parallel the whole time. Six minutes is the time cap here. We just saw a bit of confusion there on Roman's behalf. It looked like he miscounted, started to go to his rower, had to go back to the box and do one more jump. And the timing is presented by G-Shock, the official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games. And there is Roman Krenikov, who's gonna have no problem on the rower. Lazar Jukic is your leader right now. At the 36 rep mark, he will Move from the rower onto the nine burpee box jump overs at 48 inches, and there goes Lazar, who comes in in ninth place overall with 421 points. And now Roman Krenikov is moving forward along with Pat Felder and Jeffrey Adler, and then Bailey Martin at the bottom of your screen. So all the men now onto their burpee box jump overs. Chandler Smith, who's in third place overall, was the last man to get to these nine reps. Sean, this heat is so stacked, and this test is so simple by design in regards to just doing work and doing it quickly that it's so hard to, to pick a front runner or someone naturally inclined to have an advantage here. This is literally going to be a slugfest all the way through the finish line. Well, Pat Felder was able to move himself in the first. Roman Krenikov ran past the box and got himself on the rower, and everybody in this building is waving him back, and that is a big mistake for Krenikov. Myself included, Sean, I'm literally like waving as if he's gonna see me or hear me. I, it's, it's crazy to see him go just past that. It's gonna cost him seconds, but I think he can recover. Now the good news for Roman is he has such a huge lead that he doesn't have to do a ton of damage control here, but Jeffrey Adler, who's on the left side of your screen, sits in second place, and he's been trying to just chip points off of Roman's lead here. So Velder is your leader in this heat, and he is now back to the rower, so one more look at it. On the right side, Roman Krenikov runs right to the rower, and he had to get to the box of overs, and the judge calls him back, but in a test where every second matters, that could be huge for our overall leader. 
And it, and it will affect him for, for a little bit, Sean, in his mind. Even as he's executing right now, you got to wonder, does it build urgency? Is he going to pre-fatigue himself now on the urge? You had a great point, though. He's got quite the buffer, so he's allowed to settle mentally in that situation, understand. Um, he, he's, he's, in a, he's in a better situation than most. There's our leader right now in the heat, Pat Veller, eighth place overall, and he is back to the burpee box jump overs. Pat Felder has four sixths and two twenty sevens, and then he finished tenth earlier this morning in the five k. And we know Pat can be good for some up and, and down throughout the course of a, of a week or a weekend. But right now he's making slight work of these burpee box jump overs, looking very smooth, getting one foot on top, kicking that other leg all the way through, almost sliding across the box. But Felder only has that one rep remaining, and he will demolish Jonakowski's top time. So Felder is in. 336.41 seconds. A Bailey Martin at the bottom of your screen is fighting with Gorba Carl Gubitson and Brett Fikowski. This is going to be a close finish between the three of them. And Gubitson and Martin got across at about the same time. Gubitson edges his out, him out by two tenths of a second. Fikowski's in. Adler is in. Jukic and Krenikov, Hosta, Smith, and now Crouch are done. But it's Pat Velder at 336.41 wow. seconds, about 12 seconds faster than Yonikowski's prior time. But Roman Krenikov had two big mistakes here in this heat. And, it, and it's hard in a test that goes by so fast. You've got to certainly be focused not just where you're at, but also where you're going. And he just bypasses the box straight in the middle there, has a seat on the roller, probably thinking, wow, I'm in a good spot. No, Roman, you're in the wrong spot. Got to go back and get that work done. Well, there's a bit of a language barrier with Roman, so he may not have known that he had one more rep to go. Now we will reset and work our way back down the floor. So three of the top five spots occupied by Canadian athletes. Jorvan Carl Gubinson, who we do not talk about enough, how consistent he is. There he is in second place. This is his 10th straight trip to the CrossFit Games. His rookie year was in 2014. After that, he has never finished lower than ninth at the CrossFit Games. It's an amazing resume again, Sean, like you mentioned. We don't, we don't talk about him enough. But he's, he's one of those men that shows up, does the work, doesn't bring a lot of external attention to himself. He's one of the best to ever do it. Pat getting that crowd ready. Pat Felder is going to attack this thing with an attitude here. There's Roman Krenikov trying to make up for some mistakes he made in Heat 1. We are ready to start the second and final interval for Heat number three for the men. And it's Patrick Vellner who has your top time after Heat number one at 336.41 seconds. And for folks that are wondering, man, I thought Roman would be in the top five of this opening portion of this test here. Well, he made a couple errors on that first half, and it cost some precious time in which he's trying to make up for. We wonder, will these errors be the one that take him out of the top ten for his first time in the course of this week at the CrossFit Games here in 2023? Nine reps here on this 48-inch box. The athletes just can get over it however they want. They just cannot swing their feet around the box. And Velder is the first man back to the lower fall by Brett Fikowski and Bjorn and Carl Gumitson and Lazar Jukic at the top of your screen. And then in the bottom of the screen, it was Bailey Martin who got there as well. So now 15 calories here. And Patrick Velder, who has a history of digging himself an early hole here at the CrossFit Games, did it again in the opening test when he finished 27. There's Brett Fikowski, who currently sits in fifth place overall. We can relate to that look, Sean. I've been there. You've been there. Everybody that's doing CrossFit at home has been there. you got to persevere and keep pushing. This is a nasty test, especially on the back half. Keep driving with the legs. Keep pulling with the arms. Looks like Bellner. me running a 400. Bellner showing us more of the same. Well, Patrick Bellner continues to lead here. The top combined time from the two intervals belongs to Yonikowski at 745.38 seconds. Now, Roman Krenikov is the last man to the box jump overs here. The man on the right side with no shirt on is Jeff Adler. He sits in second place. He has a 96-point deficit to make up on Krenikov 
for the top spot in the overall standings. If you win a test, you get 100 points. Second place is worth 96, and so forth, so far and so forth as you work your way down the standings as Pat Velder continues to attack this test. He is in the lead here on the way back down the floor. Here come Bailey Martin and Lazar Jukic. Velder's got nine reps here, then back to the rower on the left side of your screen for 15 more calories. Sean, it's interesting. I liken this test to something like running an 800 meter for time, having a two minute reset period, and running another 800 meter for time. And Pat Velner is very comfortable being uncomfortable, and he's shown us right now in this test. Final rep for Pat Velner. He'll be the first man to his second and final 15 calories. Lazar Jukic currently sits in second place. Ninth place overall for Lazar. He's got now two reps remaining on his set of nine, and Pat Velner is leaving everybody behind him here. Wow, what a buffer. Crouch making his way to the rower. Well, Jay Crouch making up some ground here. Bailey Martin is in along with Jukic and Bjorgen Carl Gubens in top of your screen in the blue shorts. Now Chandler Smith is done, and our overall leader, Roman Krennikov, is towards the back. He is in last place now in this heat, so the door is open for Jeff Adler to carve some more points off of that lead. And here comes Roman. Now Pat Velder is off the rower. 21 reps here for Velder. He's got to go up and over. Just by himself. The power that he pulls on those, those, those rower handles with and the efficiency of his Burby box jump over has, has earned them this opportunity. He's soaking in moments just like this where he knows he's about to take one home. Jay Crouch on the left side of your screen, the man who comes in in fourth place overall out of Australia was the second athlete to the box jump overs. Roman Krennikov in the background. You can see him in the red shorts still on the rower. The Pat Velner as the crowd comes to his feet is getting set to win this test. Velner is done, and Pat Velner is going to stroll across the finish line and put 100 points in his pocket. Pat loves those moments in the Coliseum. Bailey Martin is in. Now here comes Jay Crouch as well. Jukic and Gubitz in top of your screen. And now Jeffrey Adler is across. Along with... Yella Hosta, and that leaves Brent Fakowski and overall leader Roman Krennikov out on the floor. And we still have 20 times from the prior heat that are going to factor in here. So Jeff Adler is going to take a big bite out of Krennikov's lead. As Fakowski is in, Krennikov has one rep remaining, and he is across. Roman Krennikov has not made a mistake so far in this competition until this test. And it's going to cost him. It is going to cost him, and that's why we play the game, Sean. Naturally, if I looked at it, do I pick Bellin to be one of the top finishers? You know it. But guess also was have been right beside him is Roman Krennikov, and some mental errors cost him that. Let's take a look at Pat Bellner on the way back here. A lot like he started, he made smooth and fast work of the burpee box jump overs, getting one leg on, kicking the other leg through. It's like a slide across, almost like he's safe at home plate. But it's his power on the rower and consistency on the box jump overs that allowed him to just stroll right across that Belner swagger into another test win for him. Put another notch on the belt for his career. Seventh career test win for Pat Velner. 344.95 seconds in that final interval. Beat Jonakosi's combined time of 745.38 seconds. And Pat Velder is with Mike Arsenault. Pat, I think we have the same conversation each and every year. You have a slow start to begin the competition. You come into the Coliseum on Saturday and lay the smack down to get yourself closer to the podium. How important is your veteran status, all the experience that you have in managing the highs and lows of a competition? I think it makes a big difference just knowing and having the experience that it's a long weekend and you can climb back out of a hole and you know I've unfortunately made a bit of a habit of it it takes me a few days to get rolling now that I'm getting a little older but once the young guys start feeling sore that's where I thrive you know that's how I live every day so you know I got more experience than them in that respect. Well, the young guys also have a little bit better recovery time so how has your recovery changed as you've gotten older and had more experience here at the CrossFit Games? I mean the CrossFit Games recovery is a bit of a myth almost like Nobody's fully recovering any time, but 
it's just, it's eating, sleeping, it's doing all the things I was telling my wife this morning. Saturday, it starts to be tough to eat, you know? Been shoveling it in my face whether I want it or not for the last two days. And on Saturday and on Sunday, that's where it pays off. Well, so. m moving day today and you're moving closer to the podium, Pat, congratulations. Thank you very much, hope to see you here again soon. Age and experience will often beat youth and skill. And age and experience paying off for Pat Belner as he picks up his first test win of these 2023 Noble CrossFit Games and the seventh of his career. Eight tests are down. One more remain here on day number three for the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Get your popcorn ready because the heavy barbells are coming out next. The Olympic total. Test number nine up next for the individuals. We will have it here for you as we continue our coverage of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. The 2023 Noble CrossFit Games are presented by Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. Go Walk, the mobility app designed for athletes. G-Shock, challenge your limits. The official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games. The U.S. Army, be all you can be. For more information, visit GoArmy.com. And RP Strength, the official nutrition coaching platform of the CrossFit Games.
This is the guy right here that I told you about, all right? This guy, when anyone walks in here and they tell me, I can't do this, I'm like, this is the guy. Go, go, talk, go talk to Henry. When I think of CrossFit, I think of Henry. And when we open these doors, that's the person that I wanted to serve. The day I walked into CrossFit Mentality, I could not air squat to a 45 pound plate on top of an 18 inch box. You could imagine what it was like for me to just get out of a chair, stand up. I remember him telling me that he hadn't climbed a ladder at work and he couldn't even remember when. And even going downstairs, he was holding on to the railing and going down sideways. At that time, I really thought that this is what getting older was, you know, and obviously I was very wrong. There you go. So instead of pulling right to here, I want you to think, try to pull a little bit higher across your chest. There you go. Let's get one more big pull. Nice. And relax. I think the most important thing when you have somebody that's walking into your gyms is you got to build the trust and you got to explain to them what your goal is. And when Henry came in, I told him, this is going to change your life, but you need to trust me and you need to show up. He happened to be in the lobby when I came in to basically sign up for my on-ramp and he just had a short 30 seconds with me, but he said something to me that I'll never forget. He was asking me how I feel and why I'm here and I told him I have some bad knees and maybe we could correct it. And he looked at me and said, you stick around here long enough and you probably won't need knee replacements and the man was correct focus today is going to be trying to improve our positioning on our squats. So what we really want to do is get the ankle nice and warmed up along with the hips and everything else. And then the more we can get this elbow down towards this toe, you can see that knee starting to track out. That's what's going to open that up for that overhead squat here today. Dude, you're clearing your feet so well now. Like that looks easy. That looks easy, bro. That looks easy. That's what I'm talking about. He's always got a smile on his face now. And I think he's just happier and hungrier than ever because once he started to see that progression happen, it was just, it was so life-changing. He's like, I want more. I want more. I want more. And he just kept investing and doubling down. Oh, now you're just showing off. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> nice, dude. All right, so look at the difference here now. All right, and then even on this next one, when you brought your hands overhead, that was... I didn't want to scab my nose. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> when I came to Mentality, that just, it was like I jumped out of train and, and all that just changed. And every day was better. You know, I, I, all of a sudden I could do this and all of a sudden I could do that. One more set, last one. Getting to see the progress over five years of just nonstop work, showing up, not missing, and doing the things that he needs to do, and then getting to see how it changed his life. That, to me, is like winning the CrossFit Games. Cool. Well, that's all I got for you. Okay. Good job. Thanks, buddy.